Welcome back to another episode of Sunday Scaries, presented by Cottonwood Media. I am your host, the great one, your favorite host, favorite host, and I'm here with my single co-host today. Yeah, Kyler couldn't make it, so it's it's just me, Pat. Let's get after it. Another another week in the books, another Sunday to be afraid of. We had huge offensive explosions today. We had incredibly poor offenses on some sides, and we did little defense. Little defense. Some defense, little defense. Today we're going to take you through Thursday night, and then we're going to run morning to afternoon, talk about all the games a little bit, and then we will do a brief Mariner Minute, followed by update to the World Series and how I'm feeling about my picks. <laughs> and then we'll close with uh, Freeform. See what people are thinking. Love it. <clears throat> Let's get we after made, it. We made it to week eight. Um, yeah. There was a ton of touchdowns today. Oh, it, it was off the charts. I don't know. You hit that midseason where everyone was in form and the defenses were tired. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I'd love to see uh, this separation between every other week and how many touchdowns there were this week versus every other week. It seemed incredible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even even opening, what, Thursday night, that was still a good game. Yeah. And the Red Zone channel today was watched this morning. I admit, did not watch the London game. At all, but woke up, watch highlights. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, and then uh, it was just like frantic. Like the Red Zone channel, I've never seen it flash back and forth and have the dual screen games going so fast. Just like bang, 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 switch, switch, switch. Did you Touchdowns see? Touchdowns all over. Did you see the always rare quad box today? Oh, I did, yeah, I caught a quad box and then I fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know it's a day when he's like, quad box. Mm -hmm. I do love the quad box. I know DirecTV used to do uh, like an NFL channel every Sunday where they would have all the games on each respective channel and mm -hmm. then they would do like an eight box yeah. that uh, would run all day. Oh, a little octa box? Yeah, octa box. I, I mean, don't know how you can... TM. I get, <laughs> I get mad when it's more than two because I'm like, mm -hmm. you've you've aspect ratio would be so bad that I can't see what's happening on any of these. Yeah, I can focus on one game at a time. Looks like I'm watching some, like, 1990s <laughs> video game. I, it's so hard to see what's happening. Yes, it very much is. All right, with that being said, um, you want to go ahead and jump right in on Thursday? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Who'd, who'd have thunk, huh? Who'd have thunk in Tom Brady's most trying times? facing an opponent that is not garbage kind of got thumped a little uh yeah I, I i i don't feel bad for tom brady because i mean okay maybe i do <laughs> I, don't, I don't know i was gonna make up some excuse like well, he's super rich and he's gonna be a billionaire probably even though he's even when he's done with the nfl so, you know, he's not human, but, but he is, and he is um, seeing the first, like, real struggle throughout a season in his entire career, uh, and just seemingly family matters just ripping that dude in half. So it sucks to be him. It, it does seem like it is, may I have a, a penny <clears throat> in these trying times, but <laughs> I don't... If you just look at his numbers, right, it's not like it was really his fault they bricked it. He, uh, yeah, I mean, he, true, yeah. He didn't throw away any interceptions. He didn't this, that, or the other thing. Mm -hmm. Mike Evans had a sweet game. Their running backs are bad, it's, man. It's hot garbage on the ground, yeah. Leonard Fournette has made some promises, and he got into the end zone, but <laughs> congrats <laughs> on... Having under 30 rush yards, dude. That's tough. It is. Well, I mean, then again, Brady threw the ball 44 times, so... Uh. They, were, they were behind the majority of the game. Yep. Yep. But if, if you go to the other side, Lamar Jackson 
did the thing where last week he <clears throat> essentially cost them a victory, and this week he said, no, look, I'm really good again. You're going to have to pay me. Yeah, and then did you see the post game when he went to the tunnel? There Somehow this sign that somehow. a fan allegedly made made it like a good 30 feet into the tunnel, like past where the last fan is. I don't know if somebody just like frisbeed this sign <laughs> way into the tunnel and it made it really far, luckily, unscathed. This like two foot by two foot sign. Yeah, it was very, very conveniently placed. Um, Lamar grabs it, goes back out to find the fan that wrote it. And the sign said something to the effect of like pay pay that man his money. <laughs> yeah, I, that was that was it. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, uh, Went no, back out to get the fan, number sign eight, it, number give it to eight's him. written all over it. It's, yep. Was was Lamar more effective passing the ball today? Yes. Or Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he, <clears throat> he he controlled the game. And the threat of him running always existed, but he didn't mm -hmm. just run all the time. I mean, only nine for forty-three, which is kind of low for him. Yeah, but but weirdly low. Passing, he he went off for you know two thirty plus and had no interception. So what are we what are we talking about here? Yeah. Is it because the Bucks defense is imploding on itself? Is it because he is concerned? That he's just the running back quarterback. I mean, the the difference between how the Ravens ran the football and how the Bucks ran the football it will tell you why this game ended the way it did. Yeah, um, hundred <clears throat> percent. A completely different story from Baltimore to Tampa Bay on the <clears throat> ground, um, and not really much different in the air. The fact that Tom Brady had to throw the ball. I mean, six more times than Lamar, mm -hmm. and still could do nothing. I mean, one one touchdown. I mean, I guess if you equated to Brady. <laughs> I mean, the the Ravens defense was buzzing too, though. Yeah, they, they're the pressures on Brady, and and again, this is a situation where I don't know how many times I watched him try to extend a play, and it resulted in nothing. He just can't. There's no extension anymore. He mm -hmm. is. Get the ball, get it out, and if it's not out in three seconds, that play's dead anyway. I, I think it's also really difficult to, like, when we talk about these two teams, no matter who they're playing, we do the same conversation every week that is about their off-field stuff. Like, every week we are like, pay Lamar, pay Lamar, and yeah, we hit on all the stuff that happened on the field, but that seems to be, like, the overarching conversation. And then conversely with Tom Brady... Uh, you don't really need to say much about that anymore, but it's got to be hard. I mean, to have to have family at home, wife at home, kids at home, and then all of a sudden, you know, the separation happens, and you're doing the, you know, uh, the Disneyland dad thing, where you go home to an empty house, and yeah, you're still living in. A mansion, but you're going home when like kids are away with mom to oh, for a sure. pretty lonely fucking environment that would, you know, probably weigh on you, even uh, if you're Tom Brady. And I, I, for the rest of the guys on that team, for both teams, really, it's the Lamar show, it's the Brady show. Every week you just have to hear everyone be like, oh, they're the most important part of the team. And well, it is the quarterback. This but. and that. It is, but when it has nothing to do with how they're playing or why they're. You know the guy, it's tough, but yeah, Ravens. Ravens are very up and down, and this wasn't up for them. And the Bucks are sliding into a crater. I don't know how they correct this. There's too many. There's so many problems. It's it's defense, which is what they're supposed to be, looks not great, and then the offense struggles when Brady gets. Any amount of pressure. So, I mean, what do you what do you fix first? You just play the season out and go. Someone else is playing quarterback next year. We'll figure it out. Well, yeah, and that's really difficult too. Like you already touched on their defense just being littered with injuries, where uh, you're not only playing <clears throat> with somebody who has a big question mark over their head about you know what their future is, but your team's just not healthy. 
at all. Uh, I don't know, it's very doom and gloom in Tampa Bay. It's really, really bad there. I ring them up. All right. Ravens, let's fly. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's, that, that, oh, that, that, that's right. We almost forgot about that's that. That's important. Yeah, so we had the uh, Justin Tucker on the flight home oh. doing his uh, Russell Wilson parody. You know you hit rock bottom when <laughs> kickers in the league say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to take a shot at you. This is amazing. This is, this is pure satire. I mean, this is just players dunking on players for being comically... Goofy? It, just inept. <laughs> like, you're just so weird, dude. This is a Russell can't read the situation, and this is, I'm the best kicker in football. It's going to be funny when I go, Ravens. Let's fly. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> amazing stuff. That shit-eating grin on his face while he's doing it is <laughs> He said some, time. something about one of the other players doing lunges in the back. You know? Oh, it was just great. That's a... You know what? He gets a bonus point for cool kicker. Yeah. Plus, Justin plus Tucker. one to cool kicker. Yes. Plus one cool points to, to Justin Tucker. Ring him up. All right. So we got Ravens. Let's fly with 27. And the Tampa Bay drank too much grog, Buccaneers. 22. That was a nice one. Yeah, that was a good one. It was a good start. Um, all right, so now we're going back to the morning games. Yeah, and we're going to go real early morning. You just Oh, oh, that's right. We're going to do the London game first. It yeah, it's all right. so early. And that one's afternoon, too. Just, oh, that is. That's right, because that's your favorite. That's my favorite. I forgot. Game. That's the way they ordered these. All right, yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> Speaking of let's fly. Yeah. <laughs> what what um, do you make of this? The the Denver Broncos, huh? I don't know, man. Their defense did defense, and Trevor Lawrence is... Ass. He is who we thought he was? I don't know. I tried to... Uh, all of two I weeks ago, know. three weeks ago, I tried to anoint him... Good, and now I'm just, I yeah. gotta do something. I gotta cause a distraction and look over here. I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I kind of did the same thing on Trevor Lawrence where we had the uh, like early season, wait, Doug Peterson's there now conversation where maybe he'll be the catalyst to Trevor Lawrence evolving into a beautiful butterfly. We almost became a Trevor Lawrence podcast. That would have been, yeah. uh oh. Yeah, that would have hurt us. Our viewership would have tanked. <laughs> Duval? <laughs> yeah. Um, but even with all that being said, the Broncos were chasing at the end. Yes. It is It is 17 to 14, and the Broncos are chasing, which is remarkable. It is. Um, it still blows my mind. The... The level that this Denver team could be capable of playing at, and they just don't. I mean, they got a dub. Yeah. But they are still so bad with Russell at the helm. So bad. And I don't know how long you can keep being like, well, the offense will come along. It's like, mm, we're about halfway through the season. The offense should be there at some point. And I their 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 best offensive player is who? Yeah, I mean it's the guy that you paid two hundred forty million dollars to, right? No, it's not. So well, I don't know. I don't know how we fix it, but I keep seeing these things. There was this one particular video that keeps circulating, and I see it every week. Uh, I, every week of this season, where it's. Oh, obviously slight to uh, Broncos fans, and it's we paid $240 million to somebody that can only score like an average of 13 points or like 8 yeah. points, whatever. I don't know what Russell's average is for the whole season, but it's really bad instead of this guy. And it just shows like a video compilation of Drew Locke hitting like every Fortnite dance ever. And just being so cool. Was this was this the most the Broncos have scored all year? It I, in when I first uh, saw I this, bet it is. Yeah, when I think I it is. When I first saw this, I immediately went. Twenty one seems high for these guys. Here we go. Oh, they lost scoring twenty three. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that was Raiders week four. So um, the best. But yeah, the you're best correct. win they've had is a twenty one point scoring. Yep. So holy shit. 
against the Jags. And I don't know if <laughs> are the Jags just a juggernaut on the defense because I think last week they kind of got a run up on them. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, the Jags give up on average. So the Broncos. <laughs> so oh wow, they, they've wow, had a wow, wow, wow. they've had a couple very good defensive uh, yeah, point them standings. Out Zero um, to the Colts. Yeah, zero to the Colts, ten to the Chargers. Yeah, okay. Even in, I mean, this is not terrible against the Texans with 13. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, otherwise, they, they've they given up multiple tuds. Well, it's funny, though. The next time they played the Colts, they gave up 34 to them, so. Yeah. Whoops. Oh, that was a Matty Ice Goes Crazy week, wasn't it? Yeah, it yeah. was. And then Matty Ice Goes Bench week. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's hurt, Cody. Well, right, of course, of course. <laughs> The Broncos still have no idea what they're doing running the football. Um, the Jaguars do know what they're doing running the football. You just give it to Travis at the end, Junior TJ. Yep. And let him go ballistic. <clears throat> yeah, he had a fan fucking tastic game today. And um, you'd have thought with how well they were running it on the ground, they were in a position to control that clock to victory. Yeah. And I tell you what, if the Jaguars win this game. Somebody's getting fired in Denver. Oh yeah, I don't know who it is, but somebody's getting fired. I mean, even this victory, I don't think changes that conversation at all. It doesn't, obviously, like you said, make it a thing that's going to happen right now. No. But it doesn't take that conversation off the table. You've you've bought yourself some time, and and if the Broncos win next week and then the week after that you know it it becomes uh oh it was just a slow start now now we're 500 and now yeah. we're, we're maybe competing for a wild card spot but <clears throat> yep who do they have the next two weeks let's see who broncos have next week Titans, scary yep oh no they have a bye and oh, then they've right. got oh they lucked out they, they got the buy buy after the london game well you get to choose if you want that <clears throat> or not oh i did not know that any team that plays in london the next week they can choose who they play in their schedule, or if it's a buy. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, they've got Titans in uh, week ten, so they have a bye week nine, and then Titans week ten. And I'll say this: if Malik Willis is still playing against them, that that could be favorable for the Broncos. Yeah. I, um. I mean, Derrick Henry went off today uh, once again. Once again, shocking. I, yeah, I think I think he's going to bulldoze. Denver, um, and then they've got Raiders uh, week eleven. They've already so, lost to the Raiders, but the Raiders are in disarray. I don't know what to make of them. Either. Oh yeah, we'll we'll get to them. That'll be a short conversation. But I mean, hey, at the end of the day, Broncos country, let's ride. We did it. Yeah, you you never say no to a win, and you know what? Russell actually let a drive down the field at the end of the game. He did a fourth quarter drive, and he won them the game. <clears throat> He was a yep. part of a winning drive. I'm not going to just say he yeah. should have won them the game, but he was a part of the winning drive. So, um, the the very last thing I wanted to touch on here uh, with the Russell situation, I I have not seen such a blatant buyer's remorse in major sports in so long with the way that he is playing football. I'm tr I'm trying to think of like big buyer's remorse, baseball acquisitions, or or basketball or football that were just so unbelievably underwhelming I, especially for that money James, I, James Harden to the Nets is okay. stands out the most but he got out of there quick but that's basketball for you you just sure. you wheel and deal superstars in basketball well yeah because they've the got time. power to the players to the nth degree right yeah. oh, oh I'm not playing today fuck you <laughs> yeah you're like oh okay. it's crazy thanks. yeah thanks James yep but you're right it, it, since and Football's really trended towards trade now, trade often. It's, I've seen more trades in the last three or four years than I remember seeing in ten years before that. It was always off season this, off season that. Yeah, yeah, that's very but, true. I mean, imagine if the Rams trade all that shit for Stafford, and he comes out there and does exactly what Russell's doing, and it's like, oh yeah. my god, what is happening? Yep, and we had talked about that too when when they did get Stafford. We we're like, hey, is the reason that this guy's never won a playoff game? Because he plays in Detroit, or is it because he's not built? He's for not. It. Yeah, he's just not that good. Well, I think we were proven one way or another. He, he um, won yeah. the only thing that he had never won before. So yeah, 
Now, Russell has a Super Bowl already. Yep. The Broncos are familiar with the Super Bowl in the last... Two trips. In the last 10 years. Yes. So it's not like uh, neither one of them knows what the playoffs are, what winning football is. So I I don't know what's going on here, but there's something wrong. Yeah. And I think... I don't know. I don't know how you look anywhere else other than Russell. I, I know we're hitting on this way too long, but... Well, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. Ring them up, I guess. Sorry. Broncos, let's ride. <laughs> nice. The Oh, and also the Russell interview at the end where that reporter just <laughs> couldn't handle him being like, I'm so happy. Let's ride. She, <laughs> she was pissed. <laughs> but fine. <laughs> Thanks for ruining my interview, Russell. Yeah. All right. We got Broncos, 21, and the Jacksonville Joker Jaguars, 17. They just look like little kitties. You want to pet them? Kitties. Meow. All right, so we've got, we're moving on here. Maybe the game of the morning? Absolutely the game of the morning. This was, uh, <laughs> this was such an awesome game. Uh, so we've got uh, Carolina and Atlanta. And the fourth quarter debacle that occurred I mean, with Carolina's attempt at a comeback was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. And, and if we just rewind the clock a bit, I kept thinking, why aren't the Panthers winning more? And then it was like, yeah. oh, wow. the the tur- Turns out anybody can be Christian McCaffrey if you are in Carolina because <laughs> Deontay Freeman, uh, man, yeah. excuse me, my man DF here, he was all over the place. He was... Zipping and zapping and dinking and dunking and scoring that football. <laughs> he had all of the scores. Yes, it was it was amazing, dude. Um, and that that bodes a good question, like you said. If does this devalue CMC? No, because to watch Foreman go nuts here. <laughs> I mean, he did it once. Let's not get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, and it was against Atlanta, who's not again the best defensive team right and you know what shows out to Atlanta because they remembered that Kyle Pitts was on the team this week yes so that was good job Atlanta you remember he was on the team that he is a footballer that wears your uniform <laughs> um and this game had all of the implications because the Bucks are garbage we went over that but yep we have a new leader in that AFC NFC South excuse me yes we do who would have guessed it huh <laughs> who would yeah Who'd have thought? Not me. No way. <laughs> and with thought? Marcus Mariota at the helm. I love it. Um, I mean, the game played like a football game until the last five minutes of the fourth quarter in overtime. It was fantastic. So, to recap this, so the, it's 34-28 uh, Falcons. And P.J. Walker is orchestrating um, himself into what looked like it was going to be a crazy fourth quarter comeback. And he did it through what, okay, that was, that was the long game of, or the long throw of the game, I believe, to DJ Moore. Yeah, 62-yard bomb, Hail Mary Styles. I think there was, how much time on the clock? I don't know, 11 seconds, 14 seconds, something like that, when he caught the ball? Yeah, not much. So it would have been, it looked like to be like a true Hail Mary to finish the game, seemingly. DJ Moore goes into celebration mode and now, gets penalized. Yeah, mind you, right? We're still just tied at thirty-four. We gotta Correct. we gotta punch that kick through. Yeah. And so we're yeah, like tied at thirty-four. DJ Moore goes crazy, removes his helmet in celebration mode, gets penalized this for is, an excessive celebration. This is the key and peel sketch. Yes, it's hilarious. This is you can't do more than two hip thrusts. This is me <laughs> yeah, going exactly. ballistic. I'm taking mm-hmm. my helmet off. What is yeah. happening? Yeah, and it was just like, it was a clown show. And gets penalized. They apply the penalty to the PAT. So now they, they get their kicker gets backed up to what like the he's kicking like a fifty four, yarder. Yeah, like forty some yards or almost right? fifty he, yards. It's a fifteen turn penalty. They kick a thirty three <laughs> yard field goal, thirty one yard field goal. So he's kicking oh, the ball forty five yards now. And I think I believe Atlanta attempted to ice him with their last timeout. Yeah, why not? Ice the extra point. And he missed. 
And so now DJ Moore looks like a complete fucking idiot. What up? Atlanta gets the ball back, gets within field goal territory with no time left, literally just to kick one ball. Yep. They miss, so now it's OT time. I don't. Yeah, yeah. That's that's even crazier though that they like probably could have maybe won the game right there, right there. Yes. And the the thing that stood out to me most this game was they every time PJ bless his heart they showed him on the sideline almost every time there was a mistake and his head was just hung. He just was oh like, yeah. He thought he had lost them the game several times. He thought he had won them the game. And it's a the, roller coaster of emotion. At the end of it, BJ, he he's got to be crushed by this. Oh yeah, I would be so fucking pissed uh, at DJ Moore because that is one of the most big bonehead things. So this is something that you see on occasion in college football and NFL, where you've got these guys that will be <laughs> running for a touchdown. They've got no nobody within five ten yards, and they do the like going to drop the ball at the goal line thing, yeah. and they end up dropping it before they make it to the goal line, and it's a fumble because for some reason it's like extra cool to just like why is that cool? I don't see like do a cool celebration, not just a mic drop ball drop. Like it's lame. It's lame. Well, I was always under the impression you got more points if just an inch of the football touched the white line. Because yeah, how? How do you not just like, and I would be so excited to just be open field running. I would power run through the end zone with the ball into the fucking tunnel or into the <laughs> wall or something. A Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I might not ever stop. Mm -hmm. And they teach these guys. Never stop, never stop. They just teach these guys, too, like, the football is life. You never give yeah. it up. Well, unless you're on the end, you're, and you just go, nope, yeah. I don't want it. <laughs> I think even, at, like, a cooler s celebration if you're looking for that effect to like drop the ball at the goal line would be literally to drop the ball, like put the ball physically on the ground at the goal line. Yeah. Uh, make sure it crosses the goal line first, but just like, boop, boop. We're going to call this segment, um, touchdown celebration ideas brought to you by the Sunday scaries. Oh, I love it. Now here's an idea. You're on that breakaway and no one's by you. You, you lay down an army crawl into the end zone. Mm. I'd like to see that. That would be cool. Is that technically a slide, though? No, because you haven't given yourself up. You just say, I tripped, and then you start doing the army crawl, <laughs> arm over arm. Okay. Um, and then another suggestion could be uh, you you get right up to the line, and then you, like you're saying, you just tap the ball on the white line. Yeah. And then don't really enter the end zone and just go back to the sideline. Yeah, like don't ever put your feet in the end zone. Yeah, ever. yeah, yeah. Just tap the ball in the white rugby I style. Love it. You just what do they call it? Like a down it or something? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. Alright, so there's your suggestions. But notice in none of those suggestions do we say, take off your helmet and act like a wild banshee. <laughs> yeah. Like you haven't won the game yet. I get it. Big emotions. You tied on a sixty two yard bomb. And it was a great play. Big time athletic play from dj moore and an awesome throw from pj i get that but you haven't won the game yet dude i can't imagine <laughs> like, i just you didn't get the dub yet can't imagine a world where it's like you ever scored before yeah and and another world where it's like you realize you're the panthers and you have two wins and you're playing the falcons that have three wins yeah, you, this is not the NFC Championship. You have done nothing remarkable to pop off like this. It makes almost no sense. Yeah. So he screws them out of the win. Falcons <laughs> almost instantly punish him, but then we got to wait till overtime. Yep. Where Panthers moved the ball, the Falcons <laughs> moved the ball, the Panthers <laughs> screwed it again. The Falcons did what they came to do. Yeah, Falcons took complete advantage of uh, DJ Moore's shenanigans, and I think it is so beyond hilarious. I thought it was fantastic. And, and you know what? <clears throat> A lot of birds in this recap, but Falcons, let's fly. First place, baby. Yeah, first in, place. In the most shocking twist of events, the Atlanta Falcons – who I don't think wanted to win a single game this year. And next week, maybe it's next week, maybe it's the week after, they're getting Cordell Patterson back, their best player. Love it. So 
I, the Falcons are going to be the team that has to be caught now, I think. And I don't – that's crazy to say. <laughs> At that's, four and four. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Well, I wish I was in that division. That'd be sick. Mm-hmm. I can't – oh, man. Go Falcons, go, baby. That's nuts. That's I actually nuts. <clears throat> I love it. All right, we're going to ring them up. Ring them up, dude. Carolina. Down to our eighth life, Panthers, 34. And the Let's Fly, Atlanta Falcons, 37. What a freaking game. Maybe we'll do that for the rest of the scores for today. We'll do uh, whatever their like, animal or let's mascot yeah, yeah, yeah. name. And if they're a bird of any kind, let's fly. Let's fly. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Crash and burn, baby. Bears, Cowboys. Yeah, I, this, this was also was, a crazy high-scoring game. Yeah, and the worst part is, is it was like borderline uninteresting. Yeah, Cowboys jumped out to a mega lead, and then the Bears were like, "No, no, we can still play football." And then, whatever. If you're the Bears and you're behind, and you're like, "Hey, Justin, could you do more throwing?" Instead of running, and he goes, yeah, but I'm really good at the running. And they're like, yeah, but we're behind now. We need you to throw it. Yes. That's where you kind of, you know, get in trouble when he has to make the throw. So, I mean, yep, easy throws. He seems to be locked in and, and doing it now. He's The Bears are definitely throwing the ball more than at the beginning of the year. But they're um, also letting him just run more. So, yeah, so he had eight carries for 60 yards today and a tud. Uh, but overall, their their running game was pretty good. They had 240 total on the ground. That's excellent. Um, but they, which, he, which he's is, just not good at passing the football. No, and it's good to get 240 on the ground when you lose a game by 20 points. Like you really committed yeah. to that run because yep. shocking, not throwing it great. And then on the other side, no Zeke, no problem. Let, yep. Let Pollard eat. Yep. Holy moly, he did too. It, the Cowboys are looking good, unfortunately, but also maybe not because that division is crazy. It is crazy. I don't, I don't think anyone saw this game going any other way than it did today. Maybe not that many points for Dallas. Yeah, I could see that. But, but I mean, I, I don't you, think Chicago is even worth talking about. They just are bad. No, you can't be confident in a guy that can't really pass. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, uh, Parsons had a crazy uh, touchdown today. Go on. Fields makes a good pass over the middle. The wide receiver just kind of gets spooked, I guess. I don't know. He didn't get really thumped that bad, and the ball just blooped out. Cowboys piled up on it. I did I did see this. Yeah, yes. Justin Fields comes running down the field. Michael Parsons is like halfway on the ground. And he, Fields just jumps over him, doesn't bother downing him, and he gets up and just goes to the end zone. The Cowboys were like full on run into that end zone. Mm-hmm. And the Bears were like, is this play still going? Yep. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it was, and touchdown. Tough. Insanity. Yeah, I did see that one on the uh, all the touchdowns for today yeah, on the Red Zone on the Red Zone channel. Yeah, that one was a good one. TD um, City. <laughs> the, so the craziest thing too about the Bears. So I'm over here saying that they're complete pieces of garbage. They're three and five. Well, they're not the Lions, but they are garbage. Yeah, but um, Green Bay is three and four, and right now it's really not looking good for them. I know, but that division is lost. <laughs> yeah, to Minnesota. I don't. Hey, hey, we got ourselves a little bit of a football game here. Yeah, you're here, let's. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the game cast here because apparently that video is just not going to come up. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, go over here. New window. All right. So, we, oh, wrong one. That's the standings. I wanted just go Packers, down. Bills. Come over here. All right. So, we got the game cast going here. So, currently, we also have the game cast for tonight's game going on. And it's right now Buffalo 27, Green Bay 17 with 234. To go, and Green Bay has the ball on their own 35. Anything is possible. Anything is possible, boom. <laughs> um, so, sorry, back to back to Cowboys-Bears. Um, Dak had a, had a pretty good game. Yeah, he I mean, it was like near perfect. Rounded. Yeah, he's rounded in again. Yeah. I don't what – do you, what do you do, though? I mean, when you just get to run the ball for free and then you have a, a quarterback that's competent mm-hmm. that – and this is, I think, a good game for him. Game two back to 
he's played two terrible teams since he's been back. Yeah, um, so, but I mean, even with that said, I think if you take away his pick today, it's probably the best quarterback performance that he's just as far as managing the game and completions to attempts mm-hmm. yeah. that Dallas has had all year, which is kind of crazy because Cooper Rush played his booty off Man. while uh, Dak was out. Ne- never forget, huh? Uh-huh. I, I, I yep. guess I guess you you ring them up here. The Bears are in trouble. Justin Fields is a running quarterback. If they're behind, what do you do? Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, so we'll score them up here. We've got the Chicago. There's a bear shit in the woods. Bears twenty nine, and the Dallas Jerry's World Cowboys forty nine. Let's round them up. <laughs> I don't know what the Cowboys do. That's another let's Rang- wrangle. They wrangle. Let's wrangle. They had a, a really cool celebration uh, in that game too. I, I, how we are? We already scored them up, but um, fine, who was it that scored? Came over. I think it was Pollard that scored. No, it wasn't. He was their tight end. Was is that Schultz? Schultz? Is Schultz yeah. their tight end? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he caught a touchdown on the right side of the end zone, and immediately looked for one of his other players. Turned around and acted like he was gonna. Cattle wrangle him, <laughs> threw a, an imaginary rope around him, and tied him up. It was great. I bet those cowboys. Great celebration. And it was cowboys. not excessive. Because <laughs> he didn't do the third hip thrust. He didn't do the third hip thrust. And he also did not remove his helmet at any point in time. DJ Moore, we're talking to you. I'm sure the cowboys tie each other up all the time. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's their kink. Okay, so now we've got uh, Miami, <laughs> Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was actually a very interesting game. Yeah. Well, it was... This was a real Tua game, though. <laughs> this was 100% the Tua show, yeah. It is... It's really impressive that the Lions said, we're good at offense again, until we're not going to be good at offense again. <laughs> but they... The Lions had a significant lead. It was, it was approaching scary town for the Dolphins. Yeah, um, it was. Uh, before that third quarter, it was like the Lions actually might beat them down. It was 14-0, then 14-7, and then going into halftime, you're still up by 10, yeah. right? 27-17. And it, they didn't see any signs of slowing down before in the first half. So. No, no, no. And then, then the Dolphins just came out red hot. Yeah, and uh, Jalen Waddle had two touchdowns today, and one, that's back to touchdown celebrations. This is one of my favorite celebrations. You love the Waddle? I love the Waddle, dude. It's it is excellent. It's the cutest shit I've ever seen. And you know, coming from just a freak of a human being, you know it's good too when <laughs> other other NFL teams do the Waddle. Yeah. And yeah. you, you might think you're doing it sarcastically, but you're absolutely not. Yeah. It's an incredible move. I love it. And when he starts doing it, the, just the closest player on his team to him rushes over. And then there's like two grown-ass men waddling like penguins. If, it's if, amazing. If you're, if you're not careful, the whole team could get involved. And now it's the <laughs> march of the penguins. <laughs> exactly. Yes. They, they, he will not be denied. Yeah. It's, it's very, very entertaining. And I love it. Jalen Waddle had a great game. Tua went nuts, dude. 382 with three tuds, 29 for 36. Holy crap, dude. No no giveaways? Yeah, none. And the Dolphins also were able to maintain kind of running the ball. Raheem Mostert, you remember him? I remember. <laughs> I remember. He's pretty good. But then on the, yeah. on the flip side of that coin... The, the Lions did also run the damn ball. Not as effective, but they tried to run the ball. Well, Jamal Williams had two. He got he got into the promised land twice. Right. So. Well, and this is this is kind of confusing. It seems like they want Jamal running the ball, but Swift is kind of catching the ball guy for them. Because, mm-hmm. again, they both scored. The wide receivers are doing as best they can. I mean, Amon... Another pretty good game. He just didn't find the end zone. You know, he gets seven catches, almost seventy yards, sixty-nine. Nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, what do you, what do you want more from the Lions? Their defense stood up in the fourth quarter, gave up zero. Yeah, it was blanks uh, in the fourth quarter, which is shocking. But uh, agreed. That's 
<clears throat> that's kind of the problem, I think, is the Lions offense just gets so inconsistent for almost no reason. What's the what's the Lions head coach? Name Dan again? Campbell. Dan Campbell, thank you. Um I think there's something that needs to just kind of like be addressed with the way that the the direction of the program itself is well, one, yeah, you said defense needs to be figured out. So that includes getting more talent in there, but also getting a coordinator that is actually like marquee coordinator. But who wants to go to Detroit? No one. That's kind of the thing. Um, until they start becoming what the Browns became a, a few years back, where they are the mega dumpster team. Right. And they have been forever until finally the brass started making decisions towards building not just not just drafting a quarterback not just drafting the number one overall pick and having them be a blunder but they actually built a team mm -hmm. uh, both on, on both sides of the ball you're, you're you're right so i don't think anything in detroit is going to change like that no until they get the like hey we need a comeback story stamp on their back and and all they're doing is chasing away talent left and right, all all over the place, all the time. I mean, yep. And I get it. You you feel good about traded Stafford for all those picks, and you know you got that kid that what's his name, uh, he defensive lineman. He's good though. They uh, they drafted him. What, what is his name? It's gonna bug me. Looking though. Hutchinson. Oh, okay, Aiden Hutchinson. He's that's a Michigan man. Gotcha. He uh, he's he's pretty good. Though. Go blue, <laughs> but you have you have exactly like you're saying a team built on a foundation of incompetence. And, yes, and losing and much like the Browns, who you're like <laughs> you're 100 right. You you go ownership down. They need to just cut everything, everybody, and. Put pieces, winning pieces in place instead of just being like new hotness. We need it now. Yeah, um, and that, that's exactly my point. And I, there's a couple names on this team. I'm on Ross St. Brown. Great player. Jamal Williams, great player. DeAndre Swift, great player. And I'm even going to put Jeff Goff in there as a, somebody that could be a, a game changer. He played a fantastic game today. He did. He, he could help you win games, but yep. he also could just like – I mean, his stat line looks good, but then there's moments where you're like, how did you miss that pass, mm -hmm. or what do we do? You didn't need to take that sack, stuff like that. But, yeah, again, you're right. He played an efficient enough game, and they ran the ball, and they played football. I mean, even into the fourth quarter, they were once one possession and score touchdown away from winning. And I think the Dolphins are widely considered a good team. Yes. So. Oh, this may have just put the dagger in this Green Bay game. Oh, man. All right. Yeah, they had a 55-yard field goal attempt with 30, no, excuse me, 43 seconds left. Uh, went wide left. Crosby yanked it wide left. Uh-oh. Um, I assume, yeah, obviously it was going to be to put it within one score. And we he got, missed. We got so, robbed of onside yeah, time. Green Bay has no timeouts. There's 38 seconds on the clock. Victory formation. Son of a bitch. Well, they put up a better fight than I thought they would. 17-27 isn't bad. It's not bad, no. Yeah, but yeah, that's the game. Well, we'll summarize that when we get there then. <laughs> you fucking goddamn it. I think, too, and to just wrap this up real fast, the Dolphins are a very good team. Perry Kill is still, like, nuts. Just nuts. He's <laughs> he is, dude. 12, 12 for oh, 188. Man. Somehow, somehow you have 188 receiving yards along a 42, but he never found the end zone. Yep. I think he's on pace to uh, have the most receptions and yards in a season. So let's keep let's mark that down in the book to track. Uh, okay. Yeah, that is crazy. I mean, every time that Waddle was hit for a touchdown, it was like a no doubter. Yeah. You know, yeah. his last over the shoulder catch was very very nice, but I mean, it, it was. It's got a, I don't know, there's always a strange feeling about that. You got Going feel, nuclear like Tyreek did. Yeah. Oh, you, And not you, you, getting a in the end zone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what does he care, I guess? He just goes, 
Yeah. Almost 200 years. I mean, he was doing this with ran all over Ran all over the yard. Yeah, yeah. you're right. So Tyreek yeah. is still... It, he wasn't he wasn't a Patrick Mahomes product. He is a absolute demon out there. So <clears> that's, <throat> also how great would it be to be a Dolphins receiver where Waddle can get two touchdowns and still over a hundred yards while another guy goes for a hundred and eighty eight? It's like whoo Yeah. Get me on that team and I might catch a ball for thirty. Yeah. Um but do they, they don't need anybody else. I mean, even Gasecki's um, early game, I think it was an early game touchdown, if, oh, I, yeah. if I remember that right. Well, and uh, that's a threat. He's a big body threat in the red yeah. zone. Yep. Yep. But, I think I still. I think the Miami Dolphins are still a very viable, very good team. Yeah. And I don't think their defenses are, are slouches at all. I know 20, like Detroit hung up 27 on y'all, but... I mean, Detroit had the best offense for a while, and I think yeah. if there's one thing Detroit can do, it's move the ball. They just mm-hmm. can't. They never put defense and offense together. Yeah, they can't finish. Um, in summation, dolphins are the only animal that. Uh, how, what's the correct way to phrase this? Uh, will 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 bang for fun? Yeah. So, shouts out to dolphins. Um, Dolphins, let's bang. Dolphins, let's bang. I love that. <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll ring them up here. Ring them up. We've got the Miami fucking for fun Dolphins, 31. <laughs> and the Detroit, we still suck. Roar. Lions, <laughs> Roar. 27. Meow. Meow. Gary. They did uh, honor Barry Sanders. Uh, halftime. Nice. They announced he's going to get a statue put outside of the stadium. Nice, the dude. The first Lions player to ever get a statue. So Very cool. Shuts out Barry. <laughs> well, they, Barry. Can't, they can't technically build a Megatron statue until they pay him, so... Yikes. <laughs> pay that man his money. Maybe that's another thing. Yeah. I know, we, again, we, we're doing this again where we're still tucking on the... I know, but that's kind of like the charm of it. It's like, mm-hmm. oh... Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. But that's another thing. That Detroit needs to do upper management until you cannot build a team until you pay Megatron his money. This seems like the the curse of the Bambino. Mm-hmm. How do we know that yep, Megatron hasn't cursed that field and all of that team? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, dude. Right. They get you got to fix those kind of issues. But. Let's, let's also put that in the book for uh, further investigating. Yeah, we're gonna need to. Hire a, a, a team of detectives to get on this. If they ever do pay him, they probably win a Super Bowl instantly. Yeah, they're gonna win. Oh, watch out, Detroit! Cons- stand up. Conspiracy theory engage. Yeah. All right, so we've got uh, the Modern Warfare Two extra or double XP weekend versus the Minnesota Vikings. Congrats to everyone that got to play Modern Warfare Two this weekend. I did not. Well, I hope you hate it as much as I do. Oh, oh! You're you're big. I don't like Modern Warfare Two guy. I'm big. I am too old for Call of Duty guy. I uh, see. That's why I kind of feel like I don't want to download it because I mean, did, we did some Warzone. We had fun times, but I haven't played a different Call of Duty game other than Warzone in uh, I don't know y- years and years. These damn kids. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm burnt, man. These damn kids, Cody's. Out here, I'm too old for this shit. Yeah. Like Murtaugh from <laughs> Lethal Weapon. <laughs> the Cardinals had this game. They had, yeah. they had this thing in the bag. Yeah. And Murray was unaffected by Call of Duty. Maybe they, maybe they like child locked his system and only let him play for an hour a day. <laughs> maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe I don't know. They cut his internet. I don't know. But he that was not a short king's joke. All right. We respect all short kings. As long as they look up to me when they say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they were playing great football, and the Cardinals look scary. DeAndre Hopkins, nuts. What a catch. Nuts. What a snag. Just, I, mean, every, I don't know if anybody else in the league right now makes that exact no, catch every, at that time. Every week you're like, holy shit, this guy is fucking insane. He's a freak. He... I was like, oh, I don't know if he'll be that good when he comes back. Boy, gee, was I wrong. He's, I, I he's, thought that ball was a throwaway. 
It, I, well, when, like once it went in the air, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, there's a throwaway. Intention, intentional throwaway from Kyler Murray. As far as we know, it might have been. <laughs> yeah, right. Hop goes up, go go gadget arm and go go gadget twelve inch long fingers, and just one handed snags this thing in the back of the end zone. He it's must awesome. have like incredible grip strength. <laughs> oh, it's nuts! He, and well, he like, does this all. He's been doing this for years. Man. I know. Yeah. No, he is <clears throat> that top five, top three, probably wide receiver mm-hmm. in the NFL, and. For some reason, I feel like he kind of gets forgotten, but maybe that's just me forgetting that he's, like, the greatest. I don't know. He's really, really good at football. And on, um, on that note, they were really going. They were yeah, doing yeah. it. Yep. they were. It looked like they were really in a rhythm, especially coming even coming out of the first half. So, obviously, they had that second quarter touchdown, and then uh, they still came out banging. In in the second half, and it was like, dang, dude, this is a this might be a a very good game. Yeah. And what did they hang up last week? Um, didn't they? weren't they Thursday night football last yeah, week against like, the Saints? Right. They hit forty whatever. And 40 yeah, that's right. Yeah, they had forty two. So that was kind of like my mindset going into it, into the second half. Was remember last week? Mm-hmm. They looked like dog shit in the first quarter, and then never stopped right. scoring. Yeah. And I thought we were going to get that again this week, but and and they. They caused their own demise, you know? Yeah. They get the stop they need. They're within, what, what is it, three at that point or uh, five, something like that? Yeah. And and that punt goes off, and that, <clears throat> that guy just yoinked it. And that's that's got to be the worst when you have one of the best playmaking receivers and – Time is dwindling. I mean, you could easily get that ball down that field and get the victory. And he, they do have a lot of speed on offense too. He's quite it. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. Um, Zach Ertz got himself a touchdown today. Rondell Moore. Ron, Rondale Moore got himself a touchdown <laughs> today too. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, it, was, it was like they were very capable of doing it. Um, but I think Minnesota is the is the true. <laughs> They're the kings in the north. Yeah, I was gonna say, would yeah. you would you like to crown them, yeah. crown their ass? Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, never forget there were like three different kings in the north crowned. So I mean, at any moment, hashtag they, never forget. They could remember they are the Vikings. So, and Kirk Cousins could <laughs> remember he's Kirk Cousins. Yeah, but again, not a prime time game. Very true. And he played fantastic. So could could you say Kirk Cousins being the best regular season non prime time playing quarterback is like basically the Gonzaga of quarterbacks. He is the Gonzaga of quarterbacks. Okay, Gonzaga basketball team. Just want to make that clear. Yeah, don't uh, don't don't catch me in the Sweet Sixteen because I will blow it. Yeah, don't find me on Monday Night Football. I will blow it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, their only loss this year was him playing what the Eagles on Monday Night Prime Time. Who might be. The spookiest Ooh, team in yeah, football. Yeah, that's. No, we, we already talked about who the spookiest team in football is. Yeah, and they played tonight. It's the GD Bills. <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. Um, Vikings really did it today, though. Uh, and I think another. Um, they had such a balanced attack too, though. Yeah, Dalvin Cook is great. He's good at football too. He's, man. He, he's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, give him the ball a healthy amount of times, and then just don't forget to throw the ball to JJ time. Yes, and once JJ time is activated, you you cannot load the box, and then yeah. you just go run, Dalvin, run. It's crazy. To run, me. you fool! <laughs> Fly, you fools! So <laughs> JJ had. Oh no, my my math is off. Sorry, I, he had six receptions. I saw. It, I thought it said eight, but he had six receptions for ninety eight yards, an average of sixteen point three per touch. That's crazy. Oh, eight targets. That's yeah. okay. There yeah, 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 yeah. And and that's that's the thing is, Adam Thielen just exists, and he still th- and who knows? I mean, yeah, he still is a threat. I'll, I'll say this, kind of looking ahead, uh, with the Rams looking like dog shit today, I think that they should not worry about trying to sign OBJ. That seems worthless to us this year if we're not going to necessarily compete at an extreme level. The Vikings could really go for that. And that would be a devastating wide receiver setup. Yeah, I, I agree with your your Ram sentiment. It's like 
gra- them grabbing OBJ again this year will be like <clears throat> getting back together with your ex after like toxic stuff happened or something like that. Not that anything like that happened to OBJ in, in LA. No, but I mean, but, we're going to overpay him and he'll yeah. probably underperform and it won't help us further our goal of Super Bowl this year. I mean, yeah. the Super Bowl seems all but lost for many, many teams that should have competed this year. You know, the Rams, the Broncos, mm-hmm. Packers. There's there's a lot of high ceiling teams that are just kind of not doing it. Yep. Expectations are not being met in in many a uh, program uh, currently this year. And so if you get if you get the the 6 and 1 Vikings another serious threat that could really push them over the top. Yeah, I think if we, you know what, let's look at the Mike, uh, the Vikings schedule really quick and see if any big old. Oh, yep, here in a few weeks, in three weeks. Am I doing that right? No, two weeks. Two weeks. In yeah. two weeks, they have the Bills. But it's, that'll be a big test for them, and then the Cowboys. Yeah. So they're gonna have back to back rough weeks for Minnesota. And even getting one of those will be good for them. Yeah, agreed. I think if they split That's there, fine. that we're, we're still thinking that they're. Awesome. A really good team. Yeah, especially depending on which team they beat and how they beat Well, them. obviously more so the Bills because they're fucking super scary. I know. Yeah, I mean, and I imagine they're going to probably thump the Commanders. But then, you know, you close out the season for them looking at Patriots, Jets, Lions, Colts. That's a run and a half. And then the Giants maybe are good. We don't know. Yeah, we'll get there on that game. Yeah. Because, I mean, yikes, they do do? kind of Pack- shit themselves Packers, together. Bears, I mean... Just looking, yeah. just a quick glance here, I could see the Vikings ending with four losses. Yeah, maybe, maybe four losses. If we, yeah, if we go L to the Bills and Cowboys, yeah, so probably they're, their only real threat. Uh, the Jets stink. They're back to stink. We'll get to them too. Yeah. And the Giants. So maybe three. Maybe three. They yeah. could they could lose three games the rest of the season. Yeah, they they're a good lose, team. They could also lose seven. That's true. But I, I'm guessing they're going to lose between three and five the rest of the year. Yeah. <clears throat> so I I don't think the Cardinals – this is tough. I, the Cardinals are probably not nearly as bad as their record says. I agree. They're back to I full think they're, I think they're the best 3-5 and five football team. For sure. Mm-hmm. I think the problem then becomes who – how far behind are you for a playoff spot and can you possibly run down the Niners or Seahawks for the – the NFC West. And I don't think you're going to run either of them down. I agree. I actually think that the Niners are just going to actually go bananas. Really? I, I'm, yeah. It, it, but maybe it's just me because every time they play the Rams, they're like, we could win the Super Bowl every year. It yeah. could be the worst team ever. They'll just be like, you guys suck. Yeah. So Cardinals, I think best case scenario, we find a wild card for them. Okay. But I don't think their season I think that, is. Dead. Yeah, I think that's achievable for them. I don't think their season's dead. No, I don't. I don't either. I think the NFC is pretty fucking bad. Yes, it is. There. I mean, this is such a weird season with teams sitting just middle ground, with multiple teams sitting in this weird like I could win one game and be the top of my division, or lose one game and be the bottom in my conference. Yeah, the NFC South will send one sad team. Yeah. The NFC North will send one sad team. Yep. The NFC West will send one probably good team. And Depending and, on how well the Seahawks keep playing, holy shit, dude. Well, I, that's what I'm saying is I think they could be the wild card. Yeah. Or the Cardinals could be the wild card out of that. Yep. And the NFC East is going to send two formidable teams and one maybe team, you know? Yeah. So... Cardinals still got it. Don't panic yet. This I wouldn't either. You look you look offensively fine. Just don't panic yet. Yeah, and the uh, the new rush of getting Modern Warfare two will wear off. Kyler Murray will get back in his rhythm. I guess ring him up, baby. All right, we've got the Arizona fly. Cardinals fly into the sun. Twenty six. And the Minnesota Kings in the North Vikings, 34. That's pillage. What's pillage? And not, not the other R word, because we can't say that on this No, what, what are we talking about? Let's, let's not. Let's raid. Let's, oh, raid. <laughs> nice. Let's raid. Good one. Good flip. Other four-letter R word. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
mean, at this point, so I was going to say dolphins let's see, but uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, those videos are funny, <laughs> except for the person that's happening to them. Sure. Yes, of course. <laughs> dolphins will drag people down and just drown them. They're mean animals. Really? Yeah, they will. They seem like they'd like be deceptively mean. Yeah, where they, it's like, oh look, they're so beautiful. They, mm. they have a cave that they'll drag you to and just drown you in it. Oh, I love that even more. That's, That's scary. spooky. Yeah. That's mermaider. Dolphins are scary. I don't. Yeah. I don't. Really, Shouts out to Death Clock. All all sea life is scary. I don't. I, oh, I agree. You can't fight them in their territory. Right. Yeah. Like my, I belong on land. Yeah. I'm I'm a human, so yeah. I this is my territory. You when I get in the water, me? I'm in their territory. Yeah. That's mm. spooky. All of them. Mm -hmm. I think a little, a little like clownfish could take me out sometimes. Finding Nemo style. Yeah, probably. They got weird little crustaceans and like parasites in the water too. Yeah, I don't want. Else? I want anything to do. No, I don't want anything to do with that. It's it, terrifying. Yeah, I don't it know. Which, I don't know which fish is the most poisonous thing ever, and which one is. There's like, lots I can have for lunch. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Shouts out to salmon. Shouts out to salmon. Okay, on to the next game. We've got this will the be a whole, quick one, huh? Oh this yeah. This will be a very quick one. This is Alvin Kamara versus the Raiders. <laughs> yeah. Um Derek Carr, you stink. All I've been saying this, I'll call it you stink. Yep. I didn't see Harley in this game, but just looking at the stat line, um, when did he get benched? Um what I, I have no idea. Was this like a but, fourth quarter benching when the score was 24-0 or? You know what? Let's see. We've got some video stuff here. You know that's not going to uh, Yeah, the videos aren't going to work, but maybe it'll say. I don't know. Uh, it's all Alvin Kamara yeah, just Oh, that's right. Yeah, Alvin Kamara, Alvin Kamara, classic, Kamara. Classic, and classic. then a Honey Badger. And turnover? Uh, pick, yeah. All right. So, uh, wow, I just saw that. <laughs> Las Vegas. Oh, the, the negative the, one, Devontae Adams? Yeah, yeah. Uh, out of all the rushes they had, Josh Jacobs was the only one that went forward. Derek Carr went backwards. Devonta Adams went backwards. Matthias Fairley backwards. So bad. That's tough, man. That's that so is tough. so bad. And your seemingly marquee receiver, one catch in Devonte Adams, one reception for, for three for, yards. Did you say thirty yards? Three. That's three point zero. Three point zero. What? what, what what? 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 Uh, how? Uh, how are? What is happening in Las Vegas? I don't know. I somebody. I don't know. Uh, maybe they were out at the titty bars. Plural. I don't know. They need to go All to night? I don't friendship know. camp or something. I'm tired of hearing that Derek Carr and Devonta Adams are best friends. Spin zone. Maybe it's because that uh, MLB commissioner quote came out this week about or this weekend rather about the athletics probably going to be in Vegas as soon as 2023 and maybe the Raiders were like well now we're not the only <laughs> cool team in Vegas I mean yeah you've got the Golden, you've got the Golden Knights I they're very they're, cool I think the Golden Knights are probably cooler than the Raiders they're probably cooler than all the other seemingly Vegas teams that are going to come in it's, Golden Knights are the only hope that Vegas has right now. I, I can't. Whatever. Alan Kamara was completely unstoppable. Yes, and he it was, was. It wasn't necessarily that he was just like killing them on the ground. No, not at all. But uh, boy, he can run the football still. And then oh, yep. oh no, he went out for a, a pass. Yeah, and he's now, very fast. <laughs> oh yeah, he's good. very hey, very that's, fast. That's some analysis that you can't get anywhere else. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> what, what are we talking about here? <laughs> big big stat guy here. Uh, this player very fast. <laughs> Seems like New Orleans is going to go with Andy Dalton from now on. Yeah, J Jameis the Red Rocket. Tough, tough for Jameis. It is. Um, I'm still sad that Jameis isn't back. I, I miss Jameis just doing Jameis things on the field. His antics, his post games. Uh, just so funny. Pre -game. You must watch television and pre games. Pre game, he did a rap today. Oh, nice. And it was, was it was it the eating the dub rap? No, it was, oh. it, was, it was it was like a straight up freestyle. It was awesome. Oh, nice. He was it was a, a pump up rap for his homeboys, and it was. Oh, speaking of Jameis, sick. We also got a. Uh, it was an MLB highlight that I think Major League Baseball put on like their Instagram page or something like that of two other players that are like currently in. 
or had made the playoffs with their teams this year or are in the World Series, and Jameis on their team as well. Oh, really? And it had Jameis stealing home in college ball when they played at uh, Florida State. It was a pretty cool highlight. He's a great athlete. Yeah, he was actually a pretty damn good uh, baseball player at Florida State. Maybe he could consider... A career change? A career change. Maybe he could go minor league style. Yeah, maybe he could be like Dion and be the only... Two-sport athlete to Two-sport do, athlete to hit two, a home run and... And <laughs> intercept and touchdown and... Yeah. And dirty bird all over the field. Love it. All right, well... Didn't he do that on the same day? Oh, yeah. God, that's crazy. I know. Yeah, he did the thing. Game ends. He gets on his own personal jet, flies to the stadium, and starts playing football. I love it. What a maniac. So awesome. Look good. Feel good. Feel good. Play good. <laughs> yep. Love it. Yeah, there's really not much else to say about this game. It was uh, the Raiders stink, and the Saints are playing football better. This is really bad for the Raiders, though. <laughs> Like, this is really bad for them. I don't know. I don't know what other way to look at it. This is like really bad for them because you gotta fix this quarterback problem. And there's no more excuses. It's like it's not Derek Carr's fault. It's always really? been his fault. Is it not? I can't. I can't I mean, stand him. He here's, gets, he, so he's did he get too many free passes? Did he get mauled today? I don't know. Check the sacks, dog. He got sacked three times for twenty. Yeah. So was I, he doing a lot of like running backwards? I didn't watch this game for. Uh, half a second. Yeah, I I didn't either. I just saw the Kamara highlights on I, on Red Zone, and I otherwise, I saw it was seventeen zero, and yeah. was like, oh, I know what's happening. The Raiders suck. Well, that's what, so. Like when you watch Red Zone all day, obviously you're seeing only brief plays. offensive stuff yeah. in the Red Zone, or you're seeing like turnovers sure. and stuff like that. Or if there's no other games on, they'll yeah. just play the game that's that's you know currently being yeah. aired. That's why we didn't get to see any Raiders offense today because it didn't exist. Right. I mean, I don't. It, Raiders suck. Yes. Get them out of here. All right. We've got the Las Vegas. You're not raiding anything. Literally anything. Raiders. Zero. Goose egg. And the New Orleans. Bless up. Saints. 24. Let's party. Let's party. It's Mardi Gras season every day. Let's party. <laughs> All right, we're moving on to Pat's Jets. Let's build the levee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> damn, I almost, <laughs> almost, almost dropped a Kanye, Kanye West uh, televised quote there. Didn't want to do that. Yeah, good call. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, look. Current, current events awareness on my part. Smart. Yeah, yeah congratulations for <laughs> avoiding any topical friction. Yes. Uh, but it was, it was a quote that he said when he was on TV with Mike Myers. It was really bad. You can just look it up. It's fine. Yeah. Or don't. Or don't. Or don't. We're not repeating it. We're not telling you what you should do. Yes, I'm. I'm telling you that you should Be look it up if you're curious. But we don't endorse that. He's a crazy person, dog. Yeah, he is. Um, all right. Yeah, moving on to uh, Patriots Jets. Here's a game that <clears throat> historically you knew what would happen. Yes, historically speaking, there's no way that you ever pick the Jets here, but. This season has been much different. This is, you know what? This is a great, a great reset for my man Mac, who is not actually my guy. I do not like him. Right. But for him to have such a terrible outing last Monday night when he came in, yeah. yeah. Well, he started that game. Oh, that's right. And then he started, and then Zappy, the Zap attack, got yeah. two quick ones, and then played like garbage. So yes. Yep. You know what? Mac coming out. Leaving. I had that flipped with with Dallas. Yes, I forgot. Dak was the one that came in uh -huh. with the Superman cape on and shit. Leaving leaving no questions about it's his team for sure, and I think yeah. he will always be more consistent and this that, and the other thing. But uh, he used Stevenson. He didn't have to do anything today. Right. Mac Jones didn't have to do anything. Yeah, Stevenson. Yeah, shouts out to him. I you know what? He's got a Hall of Fame name. Uh, he does. Zach Wilson, Ramondre. Zach Wilson problem. Zach Wilson had so many fucking bonehead plays in this game. It's not where, fun being the the young kid that everyone loves because you just like bang moms. Yeah. But when you play bad, you look like a loser. Yeah, you look like such an idiot. And the crazy thing is that there it was there was no middle ground for Zach Wilson managing this game today. It was either he is going crazy with his throws. 
Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, he had multiple plus 50-yard throws. He had, one, he had one to Garrett Wilson and one to Mims. And this is why I'm hot. Still, right, no, crazy, I'm, right, exactly. That's a this, is why, this is why. This is why Denzel Mims is probably got a hot mom that Zach Wilson's going to bang. Watch out! Watch out, Denzel Mims. Um, Tyler Conklin had two tuds today, which was uh, the only glowing light on this game because Zach Wilson was running around like somebody was in his brain telling him to do crazy things. It was like on um, somebody took over the controller. Yeah, it, no, I, yeah, sort of like that. It I was, was my little was, brother playing, not me. <laughs> it was more like Bruce Almighty when he like takes over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Michael from The Office. You know, yeah, that guy. Yeah. Um, takes over his brain or speaking ability while he's the head news anchor, and just had him speak mucky duck. And that was. It looked like that's what somebody was doing to Zach Wilson today. It was kind of train wrecky. It was really, really bad. And I think that this final score is, it looked close. And the game was moderately close, right? The Jets yeah. were ahead for a brief moment, 10-6. to 6, And then the Patriots were just like, we're going to score like 16 straight points. Yeah, we're going to score one touchdown and then let Nick Folk just kick it all over the yard. It was... Hey, what, five field goals, I guess? Is that... How do we... Oh, math. My math is off right now. My brain also not working. Yeah, he's yeah. Five, for five, he's five for five today. Good for him. He well, has, excuse me, with one extra point as well. He had so. 16 points today. Shows he up. did. Yeah. He scored the majority of the New England Patriots 22 points. Shouts out. Hey, cool kicker point. Yeah. Plus one. Yeah, we've got... It's cool kicker week. Cool kicker week. Week eight is cool kicker week. I can't imagine the Jets feel good about this. Absolutely not. And... They best, should have won this football game. Best part is their defense, you're right, their defense really did stop that Patriots offense yeah. to a point where they weren't scoring touchdowns. But, like, if you're just going to let them kick a field goal every other possession, mm-hmm. you're still got to score, and the Jets were absolute panic mode. It felt like the whole time. Yeah. But I I feel like it was Zach Wilson in panic mode, though. Yeah. Thus, I mean, if your quarterback's in panic mode, yeah, then, yeah, yeah your yeah. team is in de facto this in panic mode. This was little brother... Threw a, a rocket, Big Brother, and then <laughs> forgot that the Patriots were going to also play the football game. Yeah, because the Patriots' defense was great. It, it's been great the last few weeks, really. I mean, barring last Monday, I think that's kind of a throwaway game because you were doing weird quarterback stuff. So fine. Yeah. But the good news is, Jets get to try again in like two weeks against the Patriots. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't know. This is so weird for me to decide, like, the destiny of Zach Wilson. With three picks today and him just blundering this game. Yeah. Is he a good, at least a good quarterback is my question. I I mean, you go, do you want him or somebody else? I don't know, because he really Jameis this game. He had 350. 55 yards. Oh, that's a great call. He did Jameis the This was the most Jameis game I've ever seen from someone not named Jameis Wilson. If you if you just go, man, this guy had 355 pass yards. <laughs> Jameis Wilson. <laughs> Jameis Winston. Sorry. Hybrid. And we scored 17 points. You go, what happened? You're like, well, he also threw three interceptions and like completed less than 50% of his passes. Yep. So, Yeah. The, the football is the program. Keep it. Yep. Hold on. Don't do it. Don't turn it over. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. I think going forward. Shouts out to Gandalf. If he if he does this consistently, you know it's not. I think the Jets are frauds anyway. Okay. I I mean it's hard to say that, but like they're in a pretty tough division, right? Yeah. Who who? The best thing to do is a wild card. Well, uh, yeah, because Buffalo is going to circle division. the wagons and every single week. And the Dolphins are definitely going to get a wild card spot. <clears throat> yeah. If you said the Dolphins and Jets are both 5-3, and three, which one's a fraud? The Jets. Yes. Yeah, I've got much more hope for a, for the Dolphins than, than I do for the Jets. That's Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. And I, I think that the Jets aren't bad, and they have a great core and base that, like, you might be peaking a little too early, but in the next two, three years, you guys could be very, very good. 
I do, I do think they make the wild card too, and I agree with you. I think okay. yeah, in the I next mean, couple of years, the Jets will really evolve in into what they're going to be as a good team. Mm-hmm. But I really do think, looking at the rest of the AFC, I think they do get a wild card spot. Okay, they could. Yeah. So they're because I don't think anyone gets one in the West. No, I don't either. No, between the Chargers, Raiders, and Broncos, no. They all stink. Yeah, there's no way. And the South, no, no way. No one other than Tennessee is going to go to the playoffs. Or the Colts, maybe. 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 But. Bengals, Ravens, probably. Yeah. Two, sure. one, one, three. Yep. Two, one, one, three. All right. It's possible. It's very possible. They wild card. Yeah. I just don't like Zach Wilson um, when he does this stuff. Maybe yeah. if we just get a little more ball security, mm-hmm. maybe slow down half a step. Yeah. They have good offensive weapons, they have a super defense. Yes. We, we can do something, Jets. Right? Man, manage the game a little bit better on Zach Wilson's part, and I think this this is a completely different story. Six and two instead of five and three. Oh, yeah. You're looking... Completely different conversation. If you're six and two, you look like a world beater. Yes. You... But if you were six and two, I might. Well, it depends on how they win this game, though. I mean, that really solidifies you. It does. Yeah. Five and three is... You're a good team. You're still mm-hmm. a good team. Mm-hmm. You're definitely not a bad team. Yeah, and if your if your biggest problem is your quarterback gets a little antsy, I think you can correct that a little bit. But yeah. I am Jets fraud camp right now. They're the <laughs> they're the fraud. Okay, I'll also tell you who else is a fraud coming up. Hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we good here. Yeah, I don't really. Nothing was really spectacular about this game <clears throat> as a whole. But the Patriots do what they do. They beat the Jets. Congrats, New England. Ring them up. The New York fly, Jets fly, 17. The, the New England Team USA Patriots, 22. Let's independence, baby. Yes. Okay. And now we're on to seemingly the juggernauts of the NFL. Absolutely. The Philadelphia Eagles against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Of course, I'm talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> of course. With a, a cherished, oh my gosh. cherished and historic franchise such as Pittsburgh, how could they possibly lose by 22 every other week? Yep. Once again, Jalen Hurts coming in today going bananas, dude. Look how efficient he is when he plays football. It's dude. crazy. And it's- I'm wondering if one of these weeks that like we're going to get – just the Jalen Hurts hurts himself thing, or I, I don't know. I, w- I would never wish that anyone gets injured unless you're just a dirtbag. Um, but he, he's like spectacular. At, holy moly! And just like finding the right guy, yes, getting the ball moving, making very clean decisions, mm-hmm. and then when you need it, he gets a little mobile. He, oh yeah, he, he, he's not looking to run though. He's just like mobile to move the play along, and then he's a huge dude too. Like he's a strong I always, person. I always forget that, and then mm-hmm. when you see it, you're like, I mean, there's that video of him like squatting like 585 pounds. In yeah, college. it's insanity. Like, what is happening? Yeah, and that was before he went bro. Uh, well, I was gonna say that was before that he was still in Alabama. Yeah. That was before he, real he pun- yeah, before he punched well, the ticket. To be fair, Alabama probably got better weight Alabama room probably there. got a pretty nice weight room. Yeah. <laughs> Some NFL teams. Um, but what you were saying earlier about like finding the right guy, that right guy today was undoubtedly A.J. Brown. I, I was talking a lot of smack last week. He finally <laughs> got his first touchdown, and then mm-hmm. he just said, that felt good. I'm going to get more of those. Yeah, I'm going to triple down on that. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. He was electric. Yeah, and Jalen was just dumping them in the perfect place. Like, these were very nice throws. We were throwing the ball down the field. We were throwing the ball middle of the field. We were doing a little check down option. Everything was working. Everything worked on every side of the ball for yeah, Philadelphia yeah. today. I mean, and I don't know. I, I was like, oh, yeah, let's go. Najee Harris, last week, sick game. Najee got some problems, and I'm going <laughs> to stop promoting him as a top-tier running back. We are no longer a Najee Harris pod. I, I still think he has all the tools to be good. I just don't know what is happening. And today, also, maybe not fair. When you're down by 30, you gotta you got to throw the ball fine. But, yeah. I mean, he, he's not even like a threat in the pass game. Yeah. So what what happened to uh, 
Oh, never mind. I, I, I did see the, the Chase Claypool touchdown. Yeah. Uh, that, that was fun to watch. Well, how bad does that feel when, like, this is how you know you're kind of like a suspect team when you're like, our best plays come off just like total bullshit. Yeah, we're going to have our wide receiver throw our only touchdown today. In the first quarter. Was it a couple years ago, the Falcons lost on like a flea flicker. Post game happens, they're interviewing the coach, and he goes, if you're going to run that bullshit and beat us, I don't respect you. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's The NFL is a little different now than it was all those years ago. It but. certainly is. Yep. But, yeah, the, the, if the, the Steelers could not do anything today. No. At all. I mean, like I said, with the exception of, of the Claypool – weird little trick play that they had in the first quarter. So what did they do? They, they, Nothing. That play was thrown backwards to be thrown forward. Yes. Yeah, okay. It was... And I I, I feel like I'm thinking of the, the right play. It was like down the right seam. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw that <clears throat> on the touchdown recap. Yeah. The TD Oh, no, City. no. It, no, it was a little flick. It was like right near the goal line. Oh, that was a Christian McCaffrey one. That where he threw it down the right side. Yes, that, that was, was the Christian McCaffrey yeah, yeah, yeah. one. That's right. Yeah, no, Claypool's was was right near the goal line. It was super short. Yeah, what a silly little play. And if you're the Eagles, you go, eh, well, they got us. Yeah, and Eagles defense doing it too. Two fumbles. One of them, you know, one for uh, fumble recovery. So uh, they just kind of nailed them. Nailed them. the Steelers. <laughs> you could say that they took some steal. Roofing nails. And yeah. Okay. Nailed yeah. the Steelers oh. to the wall. Yikes! I, sorry. That, one, on that, that one. one slipped away from you. Yeah, I had it. I had it, and then it just like pew. That one slipped away. Yeah, I Zach Wilson to that one really bad. It's okay. We'll we'll give you another try next week. <laughs> Always improving. <laughs> Kenny Pig got sacked six times. That's another yeah. plus for the Eagles defense, just being big time, violently aggressive, and yeah. where they need to be at all times. Sacking six times is very impressive, but for a loss of 40 yards, is banging. Yeah. Yeah. They ate his breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and his dessert, and his second breakfast, and, and, and his 11Ds. Again. And his afternoon tea. The last undefeated team. They've been undefeated <laughs> alone for quite some time now. Yep. They seem to only be getting kind of better week to week. They look more in control all the time. Yeah, the Steelers are not what I would call a good team by any means. No, but of course not. this is still just a statement that we are those fucking dudes well, at least, from the Eagles. Yeah, at least you don't end up in this game where the final score is like 23-16 and you're like, man, we could have blown that against the fucking Steelers. Yeah, which brings, uh, which brings up a great other point is the city of Philadelphia potential title town this year? They absolutely could be. I mean, I don't know if there's enough grease in the world to keep people from climbing buildings how are, and poles. And how, yeah, I know, right? How are the Flyers doing? I know the NHL just started, but do we know? Here, oh, know. here let's, we let's, go. Let's NHL. A, yeah, let's take a peek. Yeah, brief pause for NHL stats. This is, right, this here, is your go. 30 seconds of NHL. I hope you enjoy <laughs> it. You may never get this again. All right. Where are the Flyers at here? Philadelphia. What division do you think they're in? They're in the Metropolitan Division. All right. <clears throat> All right. So. Oh, they're 5 2 and 1. They look hey, good. Hey. Yeah, they look great too. Hey, go Philly. They're on a win streak. Fly, wow. Flyers, fly. All right, cool. Yeah. Oh, and we got another oh, Fly Eagles. They're actually fly not thing. on a win streak. I looked at the wrong end of that. All right. Well, hey, five and Oh, no, three. This is, that's the preseason. No, no. This is their first game. This is their current game. Oh, yeah. Okay. They I just see. came off a loss to the Hurricanes. Yeah, so they went bang, 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 Devils, Canucks, Lightning. All right. Yeah. Who knows if any of these teams are good or not? I don't know. It's still very, very early. But, I mean, they're down a game, a game in their division. All right, Eagles. And they play the Rangers, a division matchup. Eagles, Phillies. On the first. Flyers. Yeah. 76ers are in shambles. Oh, well, no one cares about them. Okay, you're right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And all we need is a trifecta, okay? We don't need all four teams. To, to call it title town, do you really need all four? Probably just need two, to be honest. Just two? Okay, I can live with that. And right now, it looks very good in the city of Philadelphia. I Now, have- as far as the Philadelphia city infrastructure goes, you're on the hot seat. <laughs> yeah, you, you're gonna. If I were the mayor, I would start looking into that almost immediately because I don't know. I feel like if I was the mayor, you got to be like out partying with them. Yeah, but like you make know? sure it's 
safe set up correctly sure it's like the it's like the dad that lets underage kids drink at his house yeah. but he's like but give me your keys and put them in the bowl so yeah, no one drives home you only get that's what the mayor needs to do you only get zimas yeah only zimas and yeah. and you know what I'm going to call your parents and tell them I did this. <laughs> right, yeah, and all your parents are going to know about it, and you're going to get the tongue lashing from them, and that's on that's on you, big dog. That's on God. That's on God. Um, this was a, yeah, big staple for the Eagles here. Let's see, who, who do they have next week? I, actually, I kind of want to look at the rest of their schedule. Yeah, we could start projecting some stuff here. Yeah, it's still, Uh-oh. there's still so much football left to Uh-oh. play, man. This is, oh no, Commanders. W Colts. Oh, we got Texans first. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, geez, I forgot that was a franchise. Yeah, I yeah just, watch I just, out. I just, I just overlooked that. <laughs> watch out. So in the next three, it's Texans, Commanders, Colts. I don't oh, that's, see that's Thursday night football this week. I don't see a world. Oh, so we, we got we got oh. Eagles prime time against Texans Thursday night football. Final score: <laughs> a million a to nothing. Million. Yeah, th- that's going to be a routing, an uh, absolute routing. I I see no reason whatsoever. To ever even blink at that game. T's and P's. In, yes. Incoming T's and P's. Until they play the Titans in December. So we've got probably four more wins. Texans, Commanders, Colts, Packers. And and here's the problem. You just can't just you can't write off the Packers, but it's not looking great. So they, yeah. they could just be eleven and zero before they play a team that could really cause a problem. This is a really fun thing for Philadelphia right now, too, is that their next two games. During the World Series, where right now it's going to be in Philly for the next two games, right? We've got, I think, Monday and two, or no, Monday and Tuesday? The next three games are in Philly. Next three games, that's right. Yeah. So three, there's going to be three games this week in Philadelphia. Then they have Thursday night football. in. It is in Houston, so it's not going to be in Philly. But I think, I was going to say, they could, because I think they're going to go right Monday, Tuesday, I thought I thought the setup was they could clinch the World Series in Houston on Thursday night football. I thought that was the or it's Friday. They could clinch on it'd Friday. Be, it'd, yeah, it'd be it Friday. Would be Thursday night football into Friday World Series potential. Correct. But it wouldn't be in Philly. So And they'd have to win out all week. They'd have to win four straight. Or no, right. th- no, three. Three. Just three. That's right. Because they because won they, the first they game. They stole one. They did. That was an awesome game. I can't so, wait to talk about that. I guess we've we've beat the Steelers to death. <clears throat> They're Dead Eagles, woo! Yeah. But. So the and then so the next game, right? So we've got Thursday night football. Yeah. In Houston, on the third. Mm. Then the next game they play is on the fourteenth, Monday night football, at home. So they got two primetime games in a row against possibly the two worst. Well, the Commanders aren't the worst. I'm they're, not but gonna, they're bad. They beat Green Bay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's not saying much. I'll, 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 I'll walk darn. that one back. I'll be darn. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, this is going to be a crazy two and a half, two and a half weeks. Well, I'm going to call it two and a half because the 14th would be the 15th day. Right. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a crazy two and a half weeks in Philadelphia all around. Oh, so they're going to get a buy off this Thursday night then, huh? Yeah, they're going to get... Um, is that how works? Let's see, that's a, what, 11-day difference? Yeah. No, so no, no buy. No buy. Yeah, so they go Thursday night and then roll into Monday night. So they do get, like, it's okay. a mini buy. It's a bonus day. It is, yeah. It's very much a mini buy for them. They kind of lucked out on that. Yeah, what a kinda, schedule yeah, right, for them. That's not bad at all. Yeah, and then they've got another primetime Sunday night game, Green Bay on the 27th. Man, they got all kinds of primetime games. Well, maybe the prime times are going to heat up. We don't have to deal with uh, subpar prime. Subpar prime. Uh, watching Philadelphia on this Thursday night football's game, I get the feeling is going to be a very high-rated viewership. I could. I bet it. I bet it really is. Yeah. I bet that whole Texan stadium is just filled with Eagles. That's such a cool matchup that's going on right there. Oh, I know it's gonna. I be- mean, the Texans are trash, but the fact that the World Series is being played right next door—that's so cool, man. That is so cool. Houston, title town. Some people are asking. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck the Astros. Uh, all right, we got to move on from this game. Um, well, I yeah. didn't think we'd spend this much time on it, but it got funny. Well, yeah, and we've got a little bit of MLB talk peppered in there, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, that's we always good. Job. We did our job. Uh, we're going to get our true uh, Fly Eagles Fly here, which will be fun. Yeah. Uh, the Pittsburgh, I don't know how to play football. 
Help me pick him. Kenny Pickett, Steelers 13. And the Fly Eagles, Philadelphia Eagles fly. 35. Fly Eagles fly, baby. They're crazy. Such good team. All right. Speaking of the Houston Texans. Yeah. Here we go. Texans Titans. So in a world where the Titans don't have their star quarterback... (laughs) <laughs> turns out, it, and and this is this is dead serious. It turns out anybody on planet Earth could line up behind that center and turn around and hand the ball to Derrick Henry. Yes, because I, I swear at one point they had eleven guys in the box, and it was like, what's the point? Oh, hundred percent. Malik Willis gets his first ever NFL career start. He throws the ball ten times. One of them is intercepted. <laughs> But thank God he gave the ball to Derrick Henry. Handed, sorry, Derrick Henry was handed the ball 32 times. This is amazing. 32, dude. 219 on the ground, two TDs. Also, he was he tied Eddie George for, and this this is like we need to make up. Shouts out to Eddie George. Yeah, shout out. This was this was, felt like they were like we need to make up. A cool stat for him. A cool record that he could take. I love that. He now has tied Eddie George for most consecutive games playing a team while scoring two touchdowns against them. That's awesome. So every time he plays the Texans over the last four years, he's always scored two touchdowns on them. Oh, that's so awesome. This So when I said earlier that the Saints, the Saints game was Alvin Kamara versus the world, this truly was Derrick Henry versus the Houston Texans. No no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Derrick Henry, with 219 yards on the ground, had more total yards than the entire Houston offense. Yikes. Unbelievable. That is a crazy stat line. I got bad news for Davis Mills too. <laughs> the fact you don't that, say the fact that nobody's and this is congratulations for being a Houston Texan. Nobody's even talking about like getting rid of you because no. what is, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, what do you do in, in Houston for quarterback situation? You just wait and draft somebody. I don't know. There's nothing they can do. <clears throat> There's no. It doesn't matter who the backup to Davis Mills is. If he won the starting job, holy shit. Yeah, I mean anybody. It, it could. They should do. They should do like a set up that that Dr Pepper can and let fans throw into it. And if you hit it, you get to be the starting quarterback. I love that. They do. Don't they do that at the NCAA championship? Yeah, the national championship yeah. for football. Win mm-hmm. win X number of dollars. Yeah, or the it's like college scholarship dollars or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Boy, so it's not, it's not on like a it's not on like a Simon gift card. It's but, just for your scholarship. But I might <laughs> I might try to convert that to an NIL deal now that I'm a college student. Oh, there you go. I'm an athlete. I proved it. I threw the ball through the Dr Pepper can. <laughs> <laughs> Did it? Um, <clears throat> there's not really much else to say on this game at all. It was just we're gonna. I mean, uh, I mean, Mike Frabel's game plan was w- Malik. Uh, I really don't want you to throw the ball at all. However, you are the guy that's supposed to throw the ball, so we're going to let you do it a few times. Please don't fuck it up. Oh, you threw an INT? Or you threw an INT? All right, just don't throw it anymore at all. It was like the fourth quarter, and they were Hand like... Hand ball to Derek. Derek, they were, they were talking about, like, he's touched the ball like 25 times this game. He's in the backfield. He's, like, standing up. His eyes are just wide open. And he looked like he was dying. And he knew the next play was a handoff to him. And he's like, I'm just going to do it again, I guess. Yeah. And his giant body crashes through that line. And it looks like he's just, like, stopped. And then it's like, and Derrick Henry gets four and a half yards. Like, he fell forward and just gets four yards. I mean, An average of 6.8 yards per touch. They put up a breakdown. It was like carries one through four. Average was, like, four yards a carry. Uh, <clears> carries <throat> five through ten was, like, five point whatever carries um like 11 10 through 15. 15 was like 5.9 and it was like oh you mean i'm only getting stronger it's crazy he, he does that dude in every game every season he just finds some kind of groove and people are just tired of getting bulldozed by him where not everyone wants to hit him anymore 
if I was if I was truly that size and it was like I don't care if my first five carries, ten carries don't go anywhere. If I can just square up the guy that's gonna tackle me and I thump him, thump him, well the next ten carries he might make a new decision. Yep. And all of a sudden my little three yard runs are now classic Derrick Henry, seventy yard and I don't know how he's so fast. That's the most yeah. confusing part to me. It is. He is a massive human being that runs way too fast for how big he is. He he's as strong as an ox. And it's crazy. As like agile as like a gazelle. It is. And Once he gets to top speed, you don't know what you don't know which move set he's going to use on you. Is he just going to crush me into the ground, or is he going to go zoop? Or the or the massive stiff arm. It's like every oh, single yeah. week that there's a new highlight reel of somebody getting embarrassed if on you, a stiff arm. If you're on his side, I don't think you can tackle him. No. There, it's just, I don't, you're going to need multiple guys to help you. Yeah, you but might, no one wants to hit him from the front. You might be able to slow him down while he grabs your head and just shoves you into the ground, but <laughs> bless, bless your heart, you're not taking him. Yeah. This, yeah, it's crazy. Um, I, I don't have anything else Bring to talk up, about. Man. It was yeah. the Eric Henry show. From minute one to minute 60. Yeah. Titans defense was good, though. We can just say that. <clears throat> Titans defense was very good. Yeah. But they... But it's Davis Mills. Fine. It's Mike Vrabel's football team. Of course their defense is going to be good. You know? They've been statistically very, very good for the last few seasons. All right. Here's a moment where I'll eat some crow. Talked a lot of shit about Brandon Cooks this week. He did have four catch for 73 yards. <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs> oops. I guess. I still... He's a loser. He's always been a loser. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's on a losing team for sure. One five and one, not looking good. Houston is dead. Titans to win that division. Okay. The Houston, not nearly as good as the Astros. Texans ten, and the Tennessee Derrick Henry might actually be a Titan. Titans Ooh. seventeen. Hey, I love that. Titans, let's stomp. Oh no, it's uh, it's uh, Titan the fuck up. Oh, we, that's, that's what, what they is. do. Yeah, Titans. that's uh... Titans. Let's fuck. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> that's not what I said. Uh, also, shouts out to Josh this weekend. He was a Tennessee Titans super fan for Halloween. Very easy costume because all he had to do was just put on the clothes that he wears most of the time. Anyway. Well, congrats to Josh. Congrats to Josh. You want to? He... We'll give him. A, we'll send him a prize in the mail. I'll, I'll send him a certificate of. You can just hand it to me. I'll just drive over there. Of, and to of Titans <laughs> supremacy, number one Titans fan. That's all right. It'll number cool. one. Yeah, you're number one. And it'll be official. <laughs> uh, all right. Last non prime time game. Yeah. Of the day. No, because we still got. The oh, that's right. We still got Giant Seahawks. My bad. We still got Jays in the S. <laughs> that's right. Yep. We got them. So right, still we've have to got find the quarterback uh, to sing a song about. It's going to be Sam Ellinger, maybe. Oh, oh, nice. All right. So this is a, yet another game of mediocre at best teams. The clash of the Washington Commies and the Indianapolis Colts led by none other than Sam Ellinger this week. Samuel? 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 This is the kid from Texas, right? It is. This is the guy that did the famous, we're back. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. And then they did. They were not back. They, in fact, were not back. Fact, fact check that? Yeah. Not uh, back. Horn, horns down, Sam Ellinger. Sorry, uh, bud. Well, it's not his fault because he went to the NFL. He thought they were going to be back. It's true. He left. Made it. Yeah. And now he gets his first career start. Yep. And um, Big ups to you, Sam Ellinger. So they were talking, and uh, uh, Colt, who's the Colts coach? Um, I can't remember his name. He said he was really excited for uh, Ellinger to start because he he's going to come with that sauce. Oh. And uh, I don't think he had that sauce, dog. No. No, he, he did not. He is not that guy. You're, but it is, you're not that guy, pal. It is just you're his first start, guy. and he played football, <clears throat> I guess. I mean, to pass the ball for over 200 yards in your first start is probably – notably good yeah i think to he didn't throw the ball away either no which to, it also was good um, no, he did have a lost fumble but no picks i can't really i have a hard time blaming quarterbacks for fumbles unless it's like egregious yeah like but, butt fumble yeah yeah or or being like 
why did you think you could hold the ball for 25 seconds and not get killed? Yeah, or like if you see a guy coming at you and instead of you tucking the thing you just try to into your gut. Nonsense. Try, but yeah. I think he, he played a fine game. Here's who didn't play a good game. All of the people that try to run the ball in Indianapolis. How can they not figure this out yet? I don't we know. Ta- we talked about this last week as well. Why can they not run the damn football? I It is shocking to me that Jonathan Taylor has become a shell of the shell of what he used to be. So fast, too. I, I don't like, know. Is there something is, wrong with him? Like, his ankle is bum. Okay. His... But he w- he had a run today, and it was like actually like a pretty good run. He got through the hole up the middle. He had about one guy to beat. He hit him with a pretty decent spin move. He was going to get tackled, but he was going to fall forward for almost ten plus yards. And next thing you know, the guy like baby dick slaps the ball, and it just goes flying. And it's like there's no ball security there. There's he spun, turned his back to him. The ball got punched out. It just so just fundamentally bad. Every run he had today looked like he was struggling and the Colts line looked like they were holding up nobody it was like I, I must have watched him run the ball five times right into the back of the offensive line and they just blow the play dead because it's not moving and then Naheem Hines doesn't do anything no but it's not I don't know if it's because they're like should we just keep giving the ball to JD because he because I mean, he is that guy but he's not acting like that guy or Naheem Hines had a sweet touchdown though yeah a little catch and run mm-hmm. but I, I don't the Colts best player is not playing even remotely good. And he's hurt, I guess, but if you're hurt and you're gonna be a detriment, I don't next man up. I don't want you doing this. Well, especially because they the whole reason why Sam Ellinger is playing this week. Yeah. Is because apparently Matty Ice dinged is up. a bit dinged up. And maybe he, and so this is kind of a crazy thing, too. So Matt comes out two weeks ago and sets the record in Indianapolis for, was it passing yards or completions? I don't remember. It could have been either. Yeah. Well, he kind of beat a bit of a big name. Might have heard of him. Peyton fucking Manning's record. Yeah. And then last week, kind of pooped himself against Tennessee. And, there's a and then they're like, you're on the bench. Yeah. Like you're benched, and we're gonna say that you're hurt. Is I, he hurt? I don't, I don't. I don't even know. That's the confusing part. Is like you're on a team that's three and three and one, and then you just get benched. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing that if they're saying he is whatever, he is whatever. Yeah, they are saying that he is hurt, and that's the reason. That's, uh, but I don't know, man. And I don't, I don't know, know. I don't know if you're the Colts and you. Check the internet, and everyone just makes fun of you for buying old quarterbacks to play for you. Yep. And you're like, no, we don't. We're going to play the rookie now. Right, yeah. Maybe that's why Ellinger finally got the nod. But, I mean. Or, or maybe Matty Ice really is hurt. Like, hurt, hurt. I don't know. Whatever. It's it's. But they already, did they not already announce that it's for the season? Like, I yeah, you tell me. We'll see what happens in a few weeks if, if nothing new happens. Hmm. I mean, I guess if you're a Colts guy. Do you care if you go 500 or a little under with Matty Ice or if you do the same with Sam? Like, what's the difference? Yeah, nothing. And even if you go 500 with Sam and Matt doesn't play another, yeah. he doesn't get another snap all season long, are you as a Colts fan going to sit there and be like, well, if we had Matty, we'd have, we'd have been better? Like, we, we, we might have got a wild card spot? Yeah. Like, can you sit there and honestly say that? You, no. I, I wouldn't. I mean, no. you saw you saw basically half a season's worth mm-hmm. of Matt Ryan. Yeah. You know Matt Ryan's career. He's not what he was. Mm-mm. Fine. Sorry. But yeah. a big takeaway from this game, though, was the commanders could not run the football either. No, they couldn't. And they had to rely on that late game um, Terry. Scary, scary Terry. Scary Terry. It's yeah. Halloween season, baby. Yeah, Scary Terry had that nice catch uh, in the fourth quarter to set up that game-winning drive. So that that was actually kind of a cool moment for Taylor Heineke and the squad. Mm-hmm. But you're right. Otherwise, they, man, they could not run the football. I mean, Heineke was not. a leading rusher. Yeah. Which is tough because, you know, Robinson and Gibson, they were both kind of rolling, rolling. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
classic Gibson scoring a touchdown, though, from <laughs> within the five on a pass, you know? <laughs> he's, he's the vulture of that team. I love it. It's fine. Mm-hmm. And, and they, they kept talking about, you know, Scary Terry returned home. He grew yeah. up playing high school championships in that stadium. He won his, some Big Ten titles in that stadium. <laughs> And then to have a game like this at the end, he yelled, "This is my fucking house." Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, see what? Okay. So, what's a better Washington football program quote? Is it the "Do you like that?" <laughs> yeah. Or is it "Scary Terry, this is my fucking house." I I just like the idea of Kirk Cousins like winning occasionally and be like, "You like that?" <laughs> I know, me too. Or <laughs> like when he was in Washington, who did they beat for that game? Was it Dallas? It felt like it had to be somebody that wasn't total garbage, but it'd be even funnier if it yeah. was. It was a good, or maybe it was Minnesota. It might eat. Ooh, it might have even been Minnesota. Let us, I don't let know. us know who did it, but that is yeah. The the game is secondary to him not knowing how to do good smack talk. Yeah, you like that? You like that? You like that? That's a clip that you can play forever, and it will oh, every time. It'll just always get a little. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's such a. Goob, like if, I don't know what. what if your you viral, it? if your viral clip is gif worthy, then it's it's money. Yeah. So shouts out to that, and this game was boring, boring, boring. Big burst at the end. Yes. The Colts could not score. Nope. The Commanders could not score. What do you do until the end? Yeah, until you needed it most. It was. Hey, is yeah. this is this cool? F- points to kickers. Let's look at the kickers with that. Oh, yeah. More, oh, yeah, because this is cool kicker week. They must have done something nice. No one missed a field goal. Yeah. So, yeah, Chase Chase McLaughlin was 3-for-3 three three, uh, with an extra point. He's replacing Rodrigo Blankenship, and he's done a lot better. Yep. So we have yet again cool kicker points. A, yeah, cool kicker points for Chase because uh, he outscored every other player on his team. Yep. Congrats. Yeah. Well done. Bring him up, man. The Indianapolis, please help me get up on my horse because we're back. Sam Ellinger Colts, 16. And the Washington Commies, 17. Let's march. <laughs> Let's march, commander style. All right. Now, uh, we are on the last non primetime game of the day. We've got the Giants. I, it's, yeah, I who mean, just got exposed so badly by the Seattle Seahawks, who might actually be a good football team. I'm going to, at this point, move them from the unknown middle section to the part of the, the graph that says good. Okay, so I'm going to give you two five and three teams yeah. right now, and now you're going to tell me you did this to me earlier. Yeah. Which one's a better team? The Jets. At five and three, yeah. or the Seahawks at five and three. You you probably have to pick the Seahawks. I would imagine picking the Seahawks here because I think after them knocking off the six and one Giants, who are now six and two, yeah, I th- I think that answers that question. And I think if you just want personnel, the Jets unfortunately just lost a great star running back, and Seattle has found one. Yep. And Seattle has a quarterback that is not screwed up this year. Yep. And Zach Wilson will continue, I believe, to be a little chaotic. Yeah. <clears throat> and so on, on the Geno Smith topic, he once again managed a very good football game. Very, very, very good. They seem to love him, too. Yes. Yeah, and they're commercializing him hard now, too. Like, he's on, he's on like, big NFL commercials for, like, their vote campaign and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, he's- like, Geno's getting the look. Good for him, I guess. Yeah, I, good for Gino. I hate Seattle so much. <laughs> they are they're they're a mortal enemy, a fierce rival. Yes. I despise them. But I honestly don't have like ill will towards Gino because he's never done anything to yeah. any of my teams. Yep. He's never screwed the Rams. He's never been a part of some insane malarkey. How did we pull that out of our ass? Win. Yeah. He is just and and you know what? He threw a sick pass to Lockett, who just yes, he did. dropped it. His first drop of the season. Yep. And he was so dejected on the side. He went over there and sat by himself and put his head down. 
And well, Lockett redeemed himself on that go-ahead touch. I know, but Touched Gino down. immediately ran over to him and said, come on, it's fine. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, that's big big for team morale. And then big leadership right moment, away, yeah. he went right back to him, and he mm-hmm. gets them big touchdown, huge, huge, huge touchdown. Yeah, they, uh, I think the Seahawks used their best three non-quarterback uh, offensive assets today perfectly. DK got a touchdown, Lockett got a touchdown, and Kenneth Walker, the third, who the third. is so good. His stat line today isn't isn't baffling, but he is so good so we talked as a about, threat. We talked about it last week, and it was funny because we, we all played, picked the running back that would have more yards in this game. Yeah. We almost had a tie. We almost had a tie. And K-Dub had a higher average, so we give him that. Yeah, two less carries, two less yards. Yep. Saquon was bottled up, and this is the first time I've really seen him locked up. But I mean, both him and Daniel Jones. So we saw Danny hitting multiple 100-yard rushing games on its own, just yep. keeping the ball and running mm-hmm. it over the last few weeks. Yep. Seattle put him in a body bag this week. And I think this is kind of what I was talking about, is what if you say, pass the ball, Daniel. Yep. Give it a toss. We'll, we'll take our chances. And I think they said, give it a toss, and he went 17 for 31. Yeah, he was almost 50% completion. Didn't really hurt him too yeah. badly. Yeah. You know, now, does it does it hurt that their punt returner fumbled it twice? Right. Sure. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, if you just take a sample size, what is the relevancy of them getting a possession when they weren't moving the ball whatsoever? Yeah, they were not. They, the inability to move the oh, So what was that touchdown from New York in the – oh, that's right, second quarter. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. And after that? And I was – they because the Giants had the ball like the one, two-yard line, and I thought, oh, this will be a, a Daniel Jones jump in, and then they handed it off. I think they took two handoffs to get it in. I mean, Seattle stood up for a lot of that game. Yeah. And – this might be the new template to test the Giants. You say Saquon is obviously your best player, and Daniel Jones is an absolute threat to run. Mm-hmm. What if we spy, keep the corners a little in, and say you're going to beat us by throwing the ball into some open areas that you have to find on your own? Yeah. And who knows if he's going to – maybe next week he comes out and someone does that to him and he throws for 300 yards. But – yeah. I haven't seen that. Matter of fact, yet. that's a good point. Who do the Giants have next week? I know we actually saw this earlier. Uh, uh, oh, they've got a bye. Yep. Yeah, they're doing. They're bye, doing and then they're going to. T town. Uh, yep, they're going to Houston. So, th- I think that'll be a good uh, comeback game for for the Giants. But no one really cares about you right now, the Giants. I think you got exposed today. Uh, and, and the Seattle Seahawks might be a much better team than we. And then anyone, anyone thought they would be. So, yeah, I mean, if Vegas going to set them at five and a half wins to start the season, they've already, yep. hey, shouts out to every Seattle fan that said, no, we're going to get six. You're probably going to get like 10. Yeah, they might. I don't see how you don't. And you know what? I was like, oh, boy, I can't wait to play Seattle. I don't want to play Seattle anymore. Nope. Um, so next week, Seattle has the Cardinals. Huh? <laughs> yep, they've got the Cardinals in Arizona. Then they've got which okay the that could go either way that could go either way and that could definitely go either way that's a huge game for the Cardinals if the Cardinals you know figure that out uh, that division is pretty wide open again really yeah if Seattle uh, goes in there handles business boy that division's looking scarier and scarier. Yeah. For anyone thinking they were going to win. So we've got odds for next week's uh, Arizona-Seattle game. Uh, they've got Cardinals minus two and a half. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, even Vegas thinks it's pretty damn close. That is close. Yep. And I think at the beginning of the year, Seattle played no shot in this. Yeah, I, I would love to see what the um, start of the season spread was and is now. I mean, obviously, we know it's two and a half now. Yeah, I doubt they put a spread out for every game at the beginning, but you, you, just, Maybe. you just immediately go, oh, Seattle loses that game by yeah. double digits. Yep. They've lost everything. But then they found so many diamonds. They did. Geno's a diamond. Walker's a diamond. Mm-hmm. Lockett has always kind of been a diamond. Yeah. DK is up and down, but I think he I, – I don't like his inconsistency. Apparently he wasn't Me hurt either. as I thought he was. 
So we gave him that pep talk last week, stop being hurt, and look at that. He wasn't hurt, and he contributed big. Big time today. So, uh, Giants, I don't know what to make of this. Your offense looked terrible. Your defense probably did okay. You got put in bad spots twice from garbage punt returning. But yeah, Seattle capitalized every chance they were given. And they even had the lead even before the final punt that screwed the Giants out of a chance. So Yeah. Yeah, they um yeah, after the second half. Or excuse me, after the first half. Seattle never really looked back. If Seattle wins next week, they're gonna even move up to scary team. Yeah, they'll be six yeah, if they win next week, six and three, beating a division opponent yep. in the Cardinals, who are obviously favored to win. Yeah, that'd be very, very, very interesting. I don't I don't feel comfortable picking against Seattle anymore. That's kind of mm-hmm. where I'm at. Yeah. And I don't I don't know if I feel comfortable picking for the Giants. I mean they'll they'll come off a bye and then they'll go to Houston and probably roll. Yeah. But they need to win that Houston game though. That's oh yeah. Mission critical. Oh yeah. Because the Cowboys are rolling now. They're coming right up. The Eagles are not gonna slow down. If you start letting that wild card slip away from you, it's going to be hard to grab it again. Yes, it is. Yep. Because I think it the damn I, showing. I think the Niners and Seahawks are going to be grabbing division title and wild card in yeah. so, in some capacity. I don't know who's going to win or who's going to wild card, but it, it is looking heavily that that's how it will go. Yeah. And you fucking hate to see that. Yep. It's crazy. It is crazy. And I don't know. I don't know what to think about the Giants. Uh, I'm not going to just, like, write them off. No, you can't because they're still... They still do have the threats, and they're still healthy, but you know? Like, th- this also goes back to me saying that I think the Giants could lose three of their next four games. Yeah. And this was one that a lot of people had them winning. And yep. it happened, so they're going to win against the Texans. I, I'm, I would bet a lot on that. Yeah, me too. But, all right, ring them up, and then we'll go to the final game. All right. The second to last game because we got to do L.A. for 30 seconds. The New York football, are we frauds? Giants, 13. And the Seattle, fly Seahawks, fly Seahawks with 27. I guess that's fly, dude. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, you know, bird team. I know, we always do that. Yeah, Birds bird, fly. bird team. What do they say? A flock that flies together stays together or some dumb shit? <laughs> I don't know. It's... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't yeah, remember. We gotta go do LA. Oh, that's right. We do LA first. I forget that it's your favorite. It's All right. Well, favorite. yeah. Here we go. Um, so yeah, we've got the Niners and the Rams. All right. We're not gonna stay on this one long because I have, to, I have like <laughs> almost oh, no you, interest in this. You sure, Cody? I'm like no interest. You really in this. want to talk about this one? Jimmy Garoppolo. I hate him. I think he's bad. Could have fooled me. I guess he's he's bad. Stafford is probably maybe he's half his fault, half not his fault. Our defense is total garbage our offensive line is total garbage our running backs are total garbage um the niners are the world's biggest crybabies um we get a taunting penalty on a first down because our guy points and goes alan robinson first down and then the niners defense starts pantomiming to the officials that's hurt our feelings we need the flag Flag comes in, and then they start group celebrating right in our face. No fucking flag. Oh, yeah. If that you're going to a... throw that flag, those motherfuckers better walk off the field and just accept that we lost fucking 15 yards for being, like, first down. And also, the guy got in Robinson's face first. So he said, suck my dick first down. <laughs> I, I, and then, to close it out, we're, we're not winning. We throw a little dumper off to Coop. He's going down the side. He gets tackled. Kind of a scary moment. His ankle gets rolled up on. The Niner guy, the play is over. He's down. He's been tackled by two fucking guys. The Niners guy runs up and just starts down punching the pile. Like he's going to knock the ball out. Not pen- not penalized. No penalty. And they showed the replay like very sparingly because this guy is overhand swinging down with his <clears throat> club fucking hand. I said this before. Egregious. Dude, Fred Warner is still like nuts. I hate that guy. He'll probably play like garbage next week. He kills us. He just kills us. Brandon Ayuk kills us. He's garbage. Debo didn't even play today. They didn't have their offensive lineman. Kittle, garbage. 
Except for when he plays us, apparently. He didn't even do that much today, so, like, he had a nice touchdown, but it was a... Number 33, Mr. Scott, I somehow... Lord have mercy, you hear this. <laughs> if I see the back of your jersey again chasing a wide-open receiver, I'm going to write a personal letter to Stan asking him why they pay you to do nothing. <laughs> it's Nick Scott. You are unbelievable. You're unbelievable. You're unbelievable. You're unbelievable. Chris McCaffrey, holy shit. Good for him, I guess. Yeah, he had a sweet, another little trick play that we had alluded to earlier. It was kind of sexy, dude. I don't even care that that play happened. Like, if you get beat on that play, fine. <laughs> but surely, Boston Scott was the one. Not Boston. I like Boston Scott. <laughs> Nick Scott was the one chasing on that play again. <laughs> I, I no way. I can't. I'm not. And here's the deal. I'm fair and just. I'm not going to blame him for that because he needs to run up there to stop McCaffrey as fast as possible. And when he realizes it's a throw, I understand that he's got to now run the other way. So all I see is the back of his jersey. But every time it's you, dude, it's always you. <laughs> I just can't do it with him, dude. Your I'm fair and just I, was the most dictator fucking move I, I have, well, <laughs> we've ever heard on the pod. Here's Ring him up. I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> I just don't want to do this anymore, dude. This right, season I'll, I'll do is... a little bit. I just liked watching C-Mac do his thing. I thought CMC was cool today. Very flashy. Had himself a great ground game. Um, punched one in himself, and then with his fun little flippy 34-yard dump. That was also much fun to watch. Um, <laughs> Ayub got out there just scooping it in and turning around, doing the ha-ha to Nick Scott. What do you know? Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't really have anything else on this. Your monologue was just so good, just trashing your guys. Niners probably win the division if Seattle slips at all. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, let's yeah. Let's do a little divisional talk. Yeah, you want to do a little divisional talk? <laughs> mellow, mellow the waters here. No, I think you're right. I mean, we've we've hit divisional talk with every team. So, um, there's there's no yeah, in, there's in no summation, it's probably going to be the Niners for the division. There's no world where LA can win the division anymore. I there's. Dude, we're we're a, a game back from the division, or maybe it's two now that Seattle won, or a half game back from the Niners. I feel like we've never been further in last place. I think the Cardinals are better than us. I'm scared to play anybody. There's no there's yeah. no team that I'm like, oh, this will be a fun one for us. We have so many problems. And you know what? I was like, oh, we should get Kareem Hunt. No, we should not. We should not get. OBJ. You don't want Kareem Hunt. You know OBJ? Oh, oh, well, I know. We touched on the OBJ thing. It doesn't right matter if we get Kareem Hunt. Is he a better running back than we have? Yeah. But, like, he's not Jesus. He can't, like, phase through tacklers. Our offensive line refuses to do anything. So, no, I don't want to spend any money. I don't want to send anything. Just, like, yeah, roll the season. Roll. Ring, ring him up. <laughs> give, me, give me out of here. We've got the Los Angeles. I just ran into a brick wall. And its name was Christian McCaffrey Rams 14. And then San Francisco, Jimmy G, you're my apple of my eye. 49ers 31. That's mine. That's mine. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. We struck gold. Oh, man. And here we go. So we're rolling into Sunday night football here. Uh, we had Packers Bills. Uh, and you guys heard our close out to the game here about middle way through the pod. Um, this is, I mean, I don't even know if I can give this good or bad, like for Green Bay. It's bad because we lost, but I saw it being way worse. I saw the Buffalo Bills just murdering them. Um, and really the, the big story of, that is kind of the Bills' second quarter. I mean, Green Bay scoring to get it at least like a manageable-looking game when it was seven to fourteen was you know a good sign. But then the Bills just put up an oh, just cute little another one, and yeah, game ended with Green Bay having um, Green Bay having to just march down with less than a minute of uh, play time. And Crosby ended up missing from, I think it was 55 yards. 
uh, with 40 or like 38 seconds left um, to get Green Bay within seven. And that just closed it out right there. Um, Green Bay is in just such a struggle bus mode right now. It's hard to watch them play football. They did a lot of what I said I wanted them to do today, which was really good, getting on the ground, was making that ground game happen. And Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo, had a fucking crazy spin and grab catch. He did a full, like, almost 360 on that. Yeah, and it was, I don't even know how he saw the football. I mean, he was, yeah, he did the uh, 360 no scope. (laughs) <laughs> Bang! Yeah, it was it was an insane catch. It was a great throw, uh, right on the back shoulder. Uh, I didn't see who was covering him, um, but it was yeah, it was the, just a perfect little spin around snag. Well, was his jersey facing the camera? Because I'll tell you who it was. Um, it, was it had to be Nick Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Scott uh, teleported himself yeah. to Buffalo. Just to make the game just interesting. To, yeah, just to give the Packers a chance. Aaron um, Jones went nuts, nuts, though. He did, yeah. Th- their ground game was nuts. Aaron Jones did uh, did his job today big time. Didn't get into the end zone, but at least made um, the two scores that Green Bay did have able to happen, which was awesome. And, you know, if, if all things considered, the Packers don't have that second quarter, this game is really interesting. And yeah. I think they had the right idea. The game plan was very solid. Do not let Buffalo have the ball often. Yeah. And you guys really ate some time and ran that ball. It was just a dude, – dude, Buffalo can score so fast. It they, is. Yeah. It that is. second quarter was like bang, bang, bang. I'm like, oh, my God, this might this might be the moment where this gets ugly. I mean, they could have – they could have hung 40, and it wouldn't have been surprising. And That's what I thought was going to happen today. The Packers' defense really stood up, really yeah, came they did out some, in the second uh, half. You know. They did some smelling salts, is what I'm going to call it, in yeah. the locker room during To, to you know, give during up half-time. just three points in the second half is quite, quite good. The offense just wasn't yes. rolling fast enough. Mm-hmm. Time runs out quick against Buffalo. Yes, it does. And it's either because they've already scored 35 on you or because – you know, you took too long to get the ball where it needed to go. Yeah, and uh, Buffalo really had to rest on the laurels of their defense in the second half, but the only reason that they were able to do that is because they hung 24 right in the, fir- in the first half. So, I mean, like you said, they score so fast that even if you can sort of neutralize them at least 80% or 90% in the second half, you're probably still not going to win that football game. Yeah, this is a... This is a sign me up for a trip to the Super Bowl team. Mm-hmm. They agreed. They have everything you need. Yep. They have not. They have not lost at home this season. No. Nope. Um, and it hasn't even been close. No. Like, <laughs> you know. My goodness. I, I I like to think too sometimes like you don't want to be the undefeated team that doesn't know how to bounce back or how to yeah. whatever. And so. Well, we saw that from the Cardinals a couple seasons ago. Right. When yeah. they were, seven, again, Like 7-0. Yeah. Yeah. And then they lost five straight. Yeah. I, I mean, think. you start to lose and you go, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. Yeah. But to lose early, feel like a pressure that your team needs to be the best and then to just mm-hmm. continue going. I I like the Bills for the Super Bowl already. I mean, that's like the easiest pick of all time. Everyone said sure. it before the season. Everyone did this and that. Yeah. But the, the Bills and... You know, we Chiefs, you know, a little off week for them, but they are definitely like a step above the rest of the NFL. And I think the Bills are a step above them. But The Chiefs, yeah. Yeah, oh, for sure. But I don't see how many teams could even think that they're going to like fully compete against them. You have to figure out how to slow the game down to a crawl and then hope that your defense can make several stops and the Bills don't score in a minute and a half. And I'm trying to think of a team that would be able to run the ball really, really well and slow the game down. And in the strangest way, the only one that comes to mind is Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee could be that. And Tennessee's defense might be good enough to hold that. And and it's not that the Bills are worse than Tennessee. It's that Tennessee can only do one thing Mm -hmm. and do it to a degree that is borderline 
unstoppable. Yeah. I mean, Derrick Henry won't go for 200 on them. He might not even go for 150. No. But if he is slowly first down, first down, and then maybe we have to get a field goal. And then, but, I mean, you can't beat the Bills with field goals. You cannot. Nope. And I think the Chiefs showed you can't beat them in a shootout. Nope. And so, uh, trouble, man. Trouble for every other NFL team, but shouts out to the Bills, huh? Oh, did you see who they're playing next? I did not. <laughs> Fraud alert. <laughs> oh, Bills playing the Jets. Is that who you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the Jets might get the doors blown off the barn. Oh, yeah. I think that'll... Uh, Oh, boy. If you turn the ball over to the Bills... They're, they're going to eat you alive. They're going to go just nuclear. Yeah. Um, yeah, Aaron threw one pick today. That was their only turnover. Josh uh, Allen having two interceptions is yeah. tough, too. I mean... That's very uncharacteristic. But, and the thing that I see about Josh Allen, too, when he throws a pick or there's like some sort of offensive drive, uh, or series, I should say, that doesn't pan out, this guy goes straight to the bench, grabs one of them little Microsoft surfaces... And is just watching, and he'll have like three or four guys around him mm. on that offense that are all having a conversation about, here's what we can do, here's what we can do, look at this, look at this, look at this. As opposed to maybe even somebody like fucking Aaron Rodgers. Right. Just kind of sulks. Yeah. Because he's, he's like, well, I'm the best, and I got the biggest brain out here. I don't need to look at stuff. I already looked at it. I see the plays developing in my mind already, so I don't need to do that. But if you think about like bringing in the rest of your Team, assets yeah. that you that you formulate these plays with that you execute with sure i love it i love it that the way that josh allen quarterbacks for his team he's kind of a fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me guy yeah you don't catch him often mm -mm. twice you know and nope and this is also a great statement for the bills that he had a extremely average game yeah barely 200 yards Two interceptions, two touchdowns, but uh, they they can win on defense. Yep, and they can. That's probably the scariest thing about this Buffalo Bills team, right there, too, is that if they are doing like what you just said, winning this game on defense, well, we all have seen how many points they can hang on you every single week, and the likelihood that he goes out next week and goes two for two or one and two or two and three, it doesn't exist. No. He might go out next week, go 2 0, 3 0, 4 1, who knows? But he. I get the feeling Josh out. Allen throws for like 400 fucking yards next week. He might. He he might. He might yeah. welcome Sauce to the league with some special. Uh, some hot ones. Some hot passes. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, dude. I mean, tough, tough break for the Packers. They looked better than they have in a while, and it's just the Bills are brutal. Just brutal. Oh, yeah. If, they, if the Packers continue this run-first offense, they're going to start to show, I think, big improvements. I think so, too. I I, I agree. And I think that is just going to summarize how I feel about them right now, is I, that Aaron is not throwing the ball well enough to good enough assets to have their team be the 35 throws a game, 35-plus attempts a game for him. Sure. Get on the ground. I, I think it's not too late for them to change their style and sneak a wild card because the NFC, as we talked about mm -hmm. earlier, there's wild card for somebody. There's still a lot of football to be played, man. So I guess yep. bring them up, man. All right. The Green Bay, we are backed up because we've eaten way too much cheese. Packers, 17. And the Buffalo, still very much circling the wagons. Bills, 27. Let's stampede. Good one. Stampede. Yes. Okay. And then Baseball. are we going to do the Monday Night Preview? Yes. You want to do Monday Night Preview? Yes, we're going to do Monday Night Preview. All right. Oh, let's yeah. do Monday Night Preview. Bengals Browns. Let's play Pick of the Winner. Bengals. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Bengals. Um, I will also take Bengals minus three. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to take the over 45 on this. I, I think the Bengals could score 30 on their own. So I, I agree. I like the over 45. I don't know if this will be much of a game. The Bengals seem like they've kind of corrected the ship a little bit. They are, the last two games have been pretty good. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, last week, didn't Burrow 
go go fucking nuts yeah, in Atlanta. Yeah, he had like almost like four hundred yards at halftime or something ridiculous. Yeah, it was like, it was incredible. It he was had almost insane. Like Three hundred. Oh my yards. god. Yeah, does that say four eighty one? Yeah, four hundred eighty one yards last week. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. He could. He could do that again. I don't doubt it at all against against the Browns, especially in prime time. He seems like a little like. The well, I mean, he's cool, Joe Burrow. He's the get the get the bright lights on me, and I'm gonna do my thing type guy. Yeah, I, I got a sneaking suspicion this is not really a close game. Yeah, but you never know. They could minus do... three. That's it. Yeah, that that seems low, huh? Yeah, but you could you could get the Nick Chubb effect where he just runs the ball thirty times and slows the game down to an absolute crawl. Yeah, I mean, he's averaging more than a touchdown a game thus far. So, but we got to be careful because if the Bengals get the lead, you can't do that for long. Yep. The Bengals defense is still good. So. Look at Joe Burrow's stats through. That's through week seven. Yeah. He's got 2,097 yards through week seven. Yeah. And 15 touchdowns. He's rolling again. He's absolutely rolling. How are again. they four and three? Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. Well, they start off 0 and 2. So yeah. if you just looked at it in the last five, they're 4 and 1. That's probably more accurate to how good they are. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. But um, hey, just real fast, the Jets, they beat the Jets pretty bad, and that's a good team. And they, the Dolphins. They, and the Dolphins, that was not. That was, that was with, with Dolphins, though. Oh, it was. You're I don't, right. I don't count that. But it was. How come every time the Jets play like a good team, they don't look good? Was that two list Dolphins, or was that the week he, he got hurt? It was at least half a game without Tua. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't full game Tua. Right. Dolphins still have not lost a game with full Tua. Full game, yeah, full bo- full blown Tua. It's because he's a champ. It's because he's a short king. And Pride of Alabama, Rainbow Alabama. Actually, I think he's like Hawaiian. He is, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I know he played. Never mind. He, I I, and, and I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to step on any toes here, but there is a chance that he might be related to the Rock. Nice. I think. The Rock has a great lineage, and he could fit right in. And two is in there. He could fit right in with The Rock. Very good. He's a champion. <laughs> champion. <laughs> I, I bet he would be awesome in wrestling, too. Like pro wrestling? Yeah. Or, or yeah. like uh, collegiate wrestling? No, like gotcha. WWE. I bet he could do some sweet flips off the top. Oh, yeah. I would I would go to that. Oh, yeah. Very much so. Mariner Minute. Okay, yeah, uh, Mariner, Mariner. Do are we doing uh, like Mariner? We don't really we're have a whole Mar- lot of Mariner. No, talk. I know we're doing Mariner real fast. Oh yeah, that's right. We're let's do the cameo talk. Yeah, we've yes, got, we've got plans brewing. Um, <laughs> I dipped in on some cameo, and there's a lot of Mariners on there, so we might we might try to do a Mariner minute segment where we do uh, ask them questions on cameo, and then they just <laughs> don't know they're being interviewed. But <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we. We could get Seawald. He's forty bucks. He's pretty cheap. Pauly. Uh, the the one that seemed most appealing was Cal. Big Dumper, dude. Yeah, that'd be awesome. We could get him to say the opening to our our show. That'd be funny. Yeah, like maybe like a hey, this is Big Dumper. Shouts out to Cottonwood Media and Sunday Scaries. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Of this and that. Yeah. I mean. Um, for seventy five bucks, I might be able to get him to agree contractually to let us into Mariner games. I don't know. Ooh, that'd be sweet. If if I get him to say it, I have a video recording that he yeah. has agreed that we get box seats. So that's true. We're gonna we're gonna look into this. See what we can get out of him. Let's work it. Um, and that wraps it up for the Mariner minute. Congratulations. That probably was very close to an actual minute. First first time, long time. First time, first time, long time. <laughs> five ten two fifteen. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I love that. I know that's every, such an age-old segment. Every that time anyone's callers. like, I'm, "I'm gonna, I might call in the Kirk Minahan show and just do that and see if they do anything, or if they just immediately hang the phone up." But oh man, it would be awesome. I love it. All right, so now we're moving to World Series chat because um, yeah. these last two games have been uh, pretty good. Uh, yesterday's game was meh. I mean, the Phillies lost, so that sucks, but that one Friday's like game was the amazing. Game two seemed like such a baseball game where it was just like, yes, it happened. Yeah. It was a World Series. The Astros got a, a 5-0 lead, and then it just was like waiting for the game to be over. Yeah. There didn't seem to be much electricity. juice. There's no juice going for Philly Town, but game one, there was big juice. 
It was so fun to watch. It was the same setup, though. Astros hop out 5-0. Yep, er, very then, early. And then here come here come Philly. Yeah, so, yeah, Astros went two two in the second, three in the third, and... Um, yeah, the game felt bad. It did. Like, right away, we were like, man, the Astros still are so fucking good at baseball. And then fuck around, find out Philly... Came back in, gave Justin Verlander uh, yet another losing World Series performance. Verlander was, they kept saying it. This is an announcer curse or what? They said, start the fourth inning, he's perfect through three. Oh, yeah. And then immediately got three hung on him. And then two, and then they said, we cannot let him go back out there again. I don't know why. I, I have no idea why teams are doing this in the postseason. Justin Verlander should not have thrown a single pitch in the fifth inning. I agree. I, I don't know why they brought him back out, and they didn't even have anyone in the bullpen warming up. No, you had to let him get whacked a little more before <clears throat> you decided. Ugh. Yeah, you had to You had to let Philadelphia claim all momentum of this game before you're like, all right, maybe we'll pull we'll pull him out. You could you could say a uh, rough, rough fourth inning for him. Yeah. If his pitch count is still low, he's ready again a I agree. little sooner than needed. And and if you're the Astros, you already know your bullpen is good. I would just I agree with what you're saying. You get somebody else out there and try to stop the bleeding. Yep. Because they figured Verlander out right then and there. Yes, they did. And it didn't help that they wheeled him back out there to to essentially tie the game and lose all like you're saying momentum. They had they the game yep. had totally shifted there. It it had. I mean, it it was to the point where. Oh man! I mean, when so the, when the Mariners got to Verlander early, he did. It was kind of the same formula as when Philly got to him. He was still good on his velo. He was still I mean, like his his pitches were not crazy bad. I remember saying in that fifth inning, dude, they should take him out. Yeah. Next pitch, he rips it in at ninety seven. And yeah, oh like, yeah. I'm like, well, I guess that's why they're not taking him out. But like, he's lost. He was lost out there. He was putting pitches right over the plate. I mean, he was missing his spots on the edge, on the corners. He wasn't painting real well, and he was just kind of feeding them uh, meatballs. And, and I guess they, I don't care how fast you throw it, it, they're gonna smack it, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, this Phillies team has shown that they can just beat the brakes off of you with their bats. They are so good. When you start missing, they start hitting. The, I love just the whole like arc too of how Philadelphia has come into the World Series as a six seed. Their regular season win loss is eighty seven and seventy five. What? This, this is the classic. I made the playoffs at nine and seven in football. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and they have just sort of bulldozed everybody else. And uh, yeah, we all know that Houston has as well. Um, you know, Friday's game was their first postseason loss. Yeah. So. And what a time to do it, huh? <laughs> yeah, opening, it was. opening game World Series at home. Yep. So it's pretty good for Philly fans that you stole mm -hmm. one in Houston. Yeah. And now you're going to go home to what I can only imagine is the most raucous, chaotic. It's going to be fucking insane. They they could come out and just, they, they might score eight, nine, ten runs. Yeah. It could be, and that could be devastating if you're the Astros. If you got a bullpen up, if you got a whatever, but they are still the Astros and they could still just come into Philly score early and the crowd could get scared yeah you could get drained and i th i think as far as how much we hate the astros they are still very much that team that like shuts out the noise of getting called a bunch of fucking cheaters and notoriously being hated all over baseball and they still come out and are the bullies of the american league and kind of the bullies of baseball and with on that topic of everyone just sort of hating them the end of the game one when Robertson came out to throw. You have to remember Robertson was on that New York Yankees team in 2017 that had that ALCS stolen from them because Astros yeah. were fucking cheating. There, there's a little backstory, so, huh? Yeah, Robertson's got a little bad blood. Um, I'm and a he bad comes. Man. Oh yeah, <laughs> he comes in and his his stuff is looking great. I mean, he is his knuckle curve that he throws. I don't, I don't know how anybody else hits that ball, but his velocity was up 
like three or four miles an hour on every pitch he was throwing. Just juiced it out was, of his mind. He was, man. Well, and then the controversy of the leaning into the pitch. Who Was that Diaz that did that? Who was I that? I think so. I mean, that was absurd. It was Diaz. Yeah, because he, he pinch hit for uh, Trey Mancini. That was absurd. Mm-hmm. So they had was, a, that was one of the worst fucking at bats I have ever seen. They they so there was um I believe it was like a Japanese broadcast of the game, and they had the umpire mic for it, and you see him lean in. Oh, it was a Spanish broadcast. That was a Spanish broadcast. Yeah, yes. yeah, yes. And you just hear the umpire go, "No fucking way!" You leaned into that. You Get fucking back leaned here. into it. Yeah. No shot. I mean. That was awesome. It looked like on the pitch before that, he tried to lean into it, sort of, and then was like, oh, it's a little high. I'll just stick my shoulder out. Missed. And then, sure enough, next pitch, he threw his whole elbow over that plate. Unacceptable. This, it, this was the most bitch-made at-bat I've ever seen from a professional player in, in a situation like this for Diaz. You've got two base runners on already. Yeah. If you get on, you don't matter. No. Your team is down by one. You do not matter. You were they? Go, down, were they? That was when they were down by one. Yeah. That, okay. So this was bottom ten. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And it's the, six five. They Houston's got two base runners on. And and so Diaz doesn't matter. You need to get a fucking hit, dude. Was it the ninth that? Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh god. What? Uh, Bregman hit the double off the wall. No, the outfielder made that. Was that? Oh, it was Castellanos. Right it was right Castellanos. made that nuts, nuts catch. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Castellanos saved the game. Definitely saved the game with that, that catch. If that, that ball catch. lands, game's over. It was fucking awesome. And then the top of the 10, they come up, get the run, and then you're right. The bottom. Yeah. Oh, I guess, yeah. We So we skipped over uh, Real Muto hitting that oppo taco. Bing bong. Into this like second or third row and in right field. I don't want to give us too much credit, but um, we did invent the Philly shooter. We did, yeah. Philly shooters stand up. If not for us, then... Maybe they would have. Who knows? You know, who knows? I mean, it's hard to say. Yeah. I'll let, say. let the people be the judge. Yeah. So whenever you need whenever you need them to do something, you... You just you, call us. You call on the Philly shooters, and we will take a shot of whatever sponsored alcohol wants to get on board. <laughs> we'll take care of business, all right? Uh, so we did the, the classic F it fireball. <laughs> yeah, it, it was gross, and was, I regret every yeah, part about it, I don't with the exception I, of the Phillies... Winning. I mean, we had to sacrifice a little bit. Yeah. I don't know if we'll ever get a sponsorship uh, with Fireball after this airs, but um, yeah, I, I'm going to be <laughs> really honest with you. If they were like, we'll pay you, just say what's awesome and take a drink of it. I'd be like, you can keep your money. Yeah. I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'll, I'll let them pay us to say Fireball's good. But you have to drink it. Oh. This is what I'm saying. It's All right, like, yeah. You gotta I'm, go, I'm on the fence there. Fire. All right, they, they'd we'll have negotiate. To, yeah, we'll negotiate. It depends what kind of money they're throwing our way. Okay. Like, yeah. if you give us, like, um, $100 per drink we take, then we can negotiate. Oh, okay. And um, there's no cap, and we will do what we can. Yikes. We still got to finish the pod, dude. Uh, well, that's okay. That's a lot. I mean, we'll do like I don't a, even like drinking in the first place. We'll just do, like, a live stream fireball F it. The okay. F the the F it live stream featuring Fireball. Nice. And okay. Then sponsored by Fireball. Sponsored by Fireball. Um Okay. I'll, I'll reach out to them. Okay. It'll be fine. Yeah, we're we'll be in we'll we'll be in, in uh in communications. There's no way they say no. <laughs> <laughs> so so back to Diaz here. He, so he goes down, right, two oh. Yep. And he had just got uh Robertson had just given one way up and in. Yeah. That hooked, missed him, barely, almost hit him in the in the left shoulder. He almost got jerseyed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it was. Remember, we were watching yeah. that. I was like, I think that got his jersey on the replay, but they didn't challenge it. I'm surprised it. they didn't look into that more because it looked like he might have got jersey flapped. Yep, me too. And then Diaz comes up thinking about that last pitch at with a 2-0 count, gets another knuckle curve, leans way into it, hits his elbow pad. What are you doing? You have a hitter's count, 2-0. You don't matter if you get on base. No. Because now the bases are loaded, but you're only down by one. Yeah. You don't him, matter. Him touching home plate means nothing. No. You getting a walk right here, all that does is create a force around all the bags. It Honestly, if anything, yeah, okay, you're going to move that runner to third, which is only 90 feet from home. All right, maybe a wild But pitch. that's still just a go-ahead run. Because there was some wild pitches happening at that's the true. end of that game. It's true. Uh, that is how Altuve made it to third. Yeah. But again, 
to your point. In the ninth, I think, yeah. That's not how winners play baseball. No. That's that's You're pinch hitting for Trey fucking Mancini. Get up there, swing the goddamn bat. Yeah, or don't and just like don't lean over the plate. I don't know. I mean Maybe. You I've never seen someone not want to play baseball more than that moment. That's, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. <laughs> it's it, just an embarrassing at bat. I don't want to be the hero. I don't want to be the villain. I just I don't want to have this bat in my hands. I don't what want to not do? strike out. What can I do? Yeah, and then he takes one strike after that. Yeah, actually, I think he whiffed and to go to three one, and then he grounds out to end the game. Yeah, yeah, you suck. That was a terrible <laughs> at bat. Terrible decision making. Zero confidence. <laughs> little dick energy. Big lead in the bat in the in the count. Still ahead after his monumental like crybaby move, and then just hits yeah. a, a little. I mean, it was a struck ball, but I mean, sure. you're going to get just th- right at him. You're going to get thrown out on a grounder yep. to a, a infielder almost 100 percent of the time. So yep. sorry. Yep. And uh, then game two, yeah, we already touched on that. You I know, mean, it was a baseball game that was tough. The Astros got there early, got there often. Yep. And then it was no juice. Yeah. But I don't think that really mattered because all the juice was used in game one, and you only need one in. Yeah. Now we get a little bit of rest. And then we're going back to Philly. I don't think you want to we're play. We're going to Philly. We haven't been to Philly Yeah, yet. I don't think you want to play Philly in Philly. Nope. That seems. No, 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 no. Not great for the Astros. And, and like you're saying, Astros now, uh, God's do believe. Yeah. I, I, I took the Astros in six. Kind of. I had Phillies in five. So whatever. Kind of because I Which feel means like you that's need to win out the Phillies. smart choice. But as soon as I pick that, they lose at home. And it's like, oh, man. Oops. This is not this is not going perfect. I mean, they could still go into Philly and get a game back for sure, and they probably will. Yeah. But if you don't get two games in Philly, you're now really behind. I think. Oh yeah. Because I think if, if the if the Houston Astros do not take two out of these three games, it's gonna uh, be, you're going to lose the World Series. It's going to be monumentally hard, I think, for them to take two more at home. I want I want Philly to win all three of these. That would be ideal. For baseball. All three. Because when the Astros lose, America wins. All right. You want to do free swim? I got nothing else, man. I'm, right. I'm pretty good. I, we did a we did a bunch of free swim mixed in everything. We did. All right. Yeah, so it was a good day. I guess big update is we have completely set up the room now. Yeah. The recording studio is set up. Uh, new equipment has been identified, and we're going to set it up to uh, get all the action filmed and rolling. Good stuff, dude. So, uh, this has been the Sunday Scaries presented by Cottonwood Media. Till next time, see ya. Later. <laughs>